I'd like to bring this meeting to order with a brief prayer of thanks to our Savior. Our Batman, who art in Gotham, cowled be thy mane. Now, y'all know Kev Smith's a big old fat man, but did you know his favorite hero is Batman, the Dark Knight who punches dirty turkeys in the face? That's right, Cape Crusader. Punch all those turkeys. Punch them in their turkey necks. So once a week, now this no fly list fatty's gonna put the food down and get chatty about batty, and this turkey gets wordy about Gotham like it's a real place. He ain't got time for his wife or daughter. This cat woman's losing Batman and Carter. Go get a Cape Crusader, you want a pussy on now? Ha <laughs> ha! Get ready, turkeys. We gon' bat shit. Babbling about the bat with old Kevin Smith. Now here's the fat man who loves Batman himself, Fat Kev Smith. Get on out here, turkey. Welcome to Fat Man on Batman. I am Kevin Smith. Okay, kids, you're asking yourselves, how does he fucking follow up three weeks of Neil Adams dropping truth and science on fools? There is one person I turn to when I know I have to do a winning, winning episode of Fat Man on Batman. When I'm folding it in, I'll talk to like Ralph Garman. But when I need to do a sharp show, when I want people paying attention and people not going like, it's all downhill after Neil Adams. I come correct, I come strong, and I bring back to the Fat Cave one of my good friends, man, and the guy who I enjoy doing Batman commentary tracks with. Right now I can hear a bunch of fucking woodies popping, a bunch of boners, singing hosannas to the sky because they know the man sitting across from me right now is the great Mark Bernard. And how are you, sir? Good, man. How are you? Mark has all sorts of propers and bona fides, if you will. But uh, right now, you would say working for the Hollywood Reporter. That's, Indeed. That's the big job. That's the big job. When you read about news, all that news that's fit to print, fucking Mark looks at it as well. That's his job. He makes it. He writes it. He's in the news. He's writing news. But he's done a bunch of shit. He's written comic books, as we know. He's written fucking TV shows and stuff. But fuck all that. What he is is a Batman fan. <laughs> and so we get to sit around and talk about stuff. Now, we've done some commentary tracks uh, in the past, which a lot of people liked. We did Batman and Batman Returns kind of back to back. And people said, when are you going to do Batman forever? And we'll get to it. We're getting Here to it, it kids. You know why? Because we got Batman fever. <laughs> back me up. It's driving me crazy. Because I got Batman fever. We could be the modern day, what were they called? Messina and Barnes or something <laughs> like that. The guys that did Batman fever. We could fake it. Take it. We could be parody kings. Of a little known song <laughs> <laughs> from the eighties that a lot of kids would be like, What is that? Did you guys write that song? Like, yeah. no, man. What is Pac-Man? You don't fucking know what <laughs> there were two men that ever mattered in this world. The Batman and the Pac-Man. <laughs> Between those two, fucking civilization just gave up afterwards. You can't I, get better than those two. I like Pac-Man because I like to eat my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right, <coughs> folks, I'm still getting over cold plus. I'm a goddamn stoner. <coughs> so <coughs> when you hear that cough, turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> it's a read-along adventure. Follow the bouncing blunt. <laughs> we are talking Batman forever, kids. This motherfucker was helmed by the great uh, Joel Schumacher. Uh, it, Tim Burton, as we all know, or maybe you don't. Maybe some cats are like, I don't follow that fucking 80s 90s batman bullshit like what? you and your fucking old friend you old men don't fucking know what's hip nolan's hip old men i don't know what you're talking about dad jack nickel who there's only <laughs> one joker and it is fucking heath of the lord leisure he's a legend we understand kids we're talking about old fucking batman this ain't even that old mm -mm. that's the scary thing <laughs> <laughs> this is not that long ago. Uh, we're coming up on, I guess, it'll be a 20-year anniversary next year because Batman Forever was released in 1995, same year as Mallrats. One very successful, <laughs> one not even. Uh, Batman Forever comes to us from uh, 1995. What had happened was Tim Burton had did Batman mm -hmm. and very successful. Oh, yeah, through the roof. Tim Burton did Batman Returns. Financially successful, not as successful as Batman Returns, a no. significant drop, mm -hmm. um, which the studio and a lot of people uh, outside the studio, uh, media watchers in circa 1992, <laughs> um, attributed to the darkness of it. Yes. The bat, the cat, and the penguin. 
There's no way to sell that movie on Happy Meals, no. even though they did. They did. They put a fucking penguin in a Happy Meal, and then when you put him on the ground, you pushed him down, his cock came out. <laughs> it was like one of them little pee-pee dolls, and they were like, this is Tim Burton's gothic vision. <laughs> <laughs> and kids were like, what do I do? And then they were shooting pee in their mouths. <laughs> and everybody was it. like, this, this is all wrong. <laughs> that No man should have that much control. And they wrestled control of the batman franchise away from tim burton tim burton shows up here uh, as a producer mm. his name is uh, in the credits as a producer but for those of us who worked in the business and stuff sometimes you see a name under the producer credits didn't necessarily really produce the flick wasn't there all the time but if you're going to take a franchise away from a guy you probably you know better put his name above the door yeah. he built it and stuff and it's, so it's a great way to give somebody kiss away money absolutely and Thank i'm sure i can't imagine that timber was like yeah i'm gonna sit on a fucking set behind joel schumacher <laughs> and make sure he does it like he and tim burton's an artist he's like i did mine he'll do his and we'll do ed wood yeah we'll I'm gonna, do is that thing. what he went and did i think so i think that was right after um a great film a great film i remember reading a script for a third batman movie in which the penguin figured prominently, mm -hmm. and there were busts of birds that they had to get. I think it was written by the Peoples, J Janet and David, David Peoples, mm -hmm. maybe. But it was not anything like the one they eventually gave us. Now, you would imagine a couple of fucking old jokesters like us are going to be like jumping on this movie and fucking pounding dick in its mouth about how terrible it is because that. that's what people say. And yeah. That, in any orifice, armpits, <laughs> fucking nostrils, I can fit one up. Find me a hole. <laughs> but uh, we're, oddly enough, I watch, we pre watch the movie. We can't mm. just watch it fresh. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear us talk because we'd be <laughs> paying attention. Mark watched it at home. I watched it at home. I'm going to tell you right on, put it on Front Street. I mean, I'm, I will never say this publicly. <laughs> I'll just say it here on the podcast. If you ask me in real life, I'll deny it, but maybe more watchable. The Batman, Batman returns. returns. Am I crazy? Yeah, no, it's I mean, some of it is because you expect less from it. I think so. You know, like you you like we got off of Batman, you're like, oh, all right. Well, it's got problems, but it's Tim Burton making a Tim Burton movie. And the last Batman you remember in in this era is Batman and Robin. So you're going in going, This is gonna be god awful. Yeah. But it's not Batman and Robin yet. No, no, he's still trying. It's this weird bridge between Burton's Batman and the and the T V show Batman. Yeah. Um, like, uh, there's, it's lighter in tone and there's some moments like where you're like, huh, seems like a death trap. Huh. <laughs> seems like a villain's henchman. Huh? I think we're in a Dutch tilt shot right here. <laughs> like things that just bring you right back to the TV show, but it has all the big budget spectacle, mm -hmm. the giant fucking Hollywood movie. And there's Batman looking kind of like he did costume wise in the last two movies. Although different guy in the suit. Man. Yeah. Val Kilmer. This is where Val Kilmer. So Tim Burton's out. Michael Keaton's out. Michael Keaton's out by choice. He was like, I'm yeah. done with this shit. I'm, I'm sure not honest. every five, there's not a morning that goes past where it's not like, could have done one more. Could have, yeah. just one more. Would have been bad. Then Akiva Goldsman comes in on top and does a draft. Yes, he does. Now, Akiva Goldsman goes off and wins an Academy Award eventually for writing A Beautiful Mind. Mm -hmm. But he also got lone screenwriting credit on Batman and Robin. He was the sole writer. <laughs> So if you look at this movie, you don't have to be Sherlock. You don't have to be fucking better than Cumberbatch <laughs> to go like, hmm, I wonder like what happened here. Batman Forever winds up making more money than Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. So suddenly the people that make the decisions are like, well, wait a second. A lighter tone Batman did better than that fucking Bat to Cat to Penguin shit where the penguin took his dick out and was pissing the kid's <laughs> mouth at McDonald's. It's like, what movie was that, sir? It's like, never mind. That's how we carry on to Batman Returns. The shorthand. <laughs> Um, now suddenly they're like, Hey man, a lighter Batman made more money. So Turn never mind. It up. Exactly. <laughs> never mind. They don't analyze it and go like, yeah, I just knew Val Kilmer knew in the suit. Mm. And Jim Carrey mm -hmm. is a major fucking force coming off of like Ace Ventura at this totally. point. So, you know, no, it's not those elements. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, they love the campiness. So it feels like since Akiva's name is on both, but the Batman and Robin film has it is like just fucking oh i don't know how we're gonna get through that one but it is terrible it's as terrible <laughs> as you re as we remember perhaps if not worse 
Cinema Sins recently on YouTube did yeah. their first like twenty minute <laughs> breakdown of like things that are wrong with Batman. It's just wrong. lifetime. It's just like an hour and forty five <laughs> minutes. Well. Long. It was like a commentary <laughs> track. I think the person to watch here, the culprit. A lot of people go after Joel Schumacher. Now, maybe I say this because I met Joel Schumacher and he's a really sweet guy, nice guy, very funny storyteller and stuff like that. But I don't think you can lay it squarely at the feet of Joel Schumacher. I think a director works with what he's given, and I think. By the time they get to Batman and Robin, he was given one of the worst scripts ever written for a major <laughs> studio film. But that's down the road. Let's right. not fucking dogpile on Batman and Robin yet. We'll get there eventually. Right now, we're at Batman forever. So I'm going to take you back to a, a time. 1995 <laughs> is the middle of the 90s, man. <laughs> In living color. <laughs> if we can set the tone for you. Um, this movie was uh, all the buzz. They did those gigantic posters by that very famous photographer. Annie Leibovitz. Mm, I don't think no, it was her. It was the other guy. Maybe Helmet. Yeah, or somebody like that. fancy. Stunning posters of the Riddler, Two Face, Batman, Robin, and of course every comic book fan's favorite, Chase Meridian. <laughs> Doctor Chase. My Meridian. bad. I left off the yeah, Doctor no, Chase. She's Meridian. got a postgraduate degree, sir, <laughs> and a poster, <laughs> which made no fucking sense whatsoever, other than to be like, I swear this isn't a gay fantasia. <laughs> there is a woman involved somewhere in these proceedings. Um, it was uh, there was a lot of excitement in the air. It's mm -hmm. a big summer movie, and it came out, and it's a uh, first in many ways in this era of bat films. First Batman film that had like a fucking major soundtrack. Like we had had the, you know, the Susie and the Banshee song in Batman Returns, but. No, that was this one. Isn't it this one? Mm -mm, that was. Uh, Kiss uh, Them For Me. Well, Kiss Them For Me is her real song. But in that, in the Batman Returns, it was. Um, God, what was the name of that fucking song? <laughs> That's my Susie and the Banshee's approximation. It was during the scene where they're all face in face or something. Where like the, they're yeah. all Gotham swells, and then the penguin blows through. Right. He's like, "You didn't invite me, mm. so I crashed." <laughs> they he used her song there, and that charted a little bit, mm -hmm. but not like Batman Forever. Batman Forever had two massive fucking singles. Oh, yeah. Neither of what you're in the movie, you have to wait till the credits to hear <laughs> both of them. Man, one is U two, mm -hmm. one of the biggest bands on the fucking planet. Doing uh, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss kill Me, me kill, kill Me. me. Uh, and the other was fucking, which I feel was a better song, but a lot of people be like, fuck you. But I, this is, this is, I love this song. Seals, Kiss by a Rose. <laughs> that was a Batman Forever I song. Rem oh, I remember that. And this, at a time, this was like 1995, dude, we're in post on Mall Rats. We thought we were coming out in the summer, but they held us to the fall. We all know what happened there. <laughs> but I just started dating Joey Adams. So, like, right around the time this movie came out, Kiss by a Rose is all over the radio and shit like that. So whenever I hear Kiss by a Rose, it reminds me of a time in my life where I was like, one year ago, I was working at Quick Stop. One year later, I'm dating an actress. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I am the Rose and I got fucking kissed. <laughs> oh, it was fucking delightful. So when I hear that song, it reminds me of this whole fucking 1995 era. Movie came out and did fucking very well, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, it marked the kind of beginning of the end as well. Because by the time they get to the next movie, yeah, it's all over. But for a m one brief shining moment, it looked like, hey, man, like, they're going to keep going with these Batman movies. It's going to be like James Bond, and some will be more Sean Connery, and some will be a little more Roger Moore. And <laughs> maybe get a George Lazenby in there, but whatever. But then they get to Batman and Robin, and it's so fucking terrible. Just, it fucking puts a bullet in Batman's head. The one thing yeah, that could kill the Dark Knight. It's the quest for peace, man. It's, oh, it's Batman's quest for peace. You ain't kidding. Holy <laughs> shit. What a great analogy. So 1995, man. Me and fucking Bernard got some Batman fever going on. Line up. You pull up your Batman forever on your laptop, on your uh, your portable device, your phone, your your pad, your tablet, whatever the fuck. Your, your actual pad. television. Or your television, <laughs> if you're one of those fucking old grandpas Whatever. like us and shit, line up your old a DVD or a Blu-ray of some sort and start right at the beginning, man. We're getting ready to take that magical journey deep inside Joel Schumacher. <laughs> the heart and mind and soul and anus of Joel this Schumacher. This movie goes deep into Joel Schumacher. It goes until it hits forever. <laughs> Digging tunnels. Batman forever. <laughs> here we go, kids. Line it up. Um, okay, here we go, man. I am pressing play. Hit hit. There it is, man. The Warner Brothers logo is up. So pretty. Now it goes to Tim Burton Dark. But look, here's a change. 
I remember being in a theater and the Warner Brothers logo morphed into the bat symbol <laughs> and everyone went ape shit. Because look, a Tim Burton mm-hmm. production, dude. Yes. So everybody's going like, holy shit, they've never done that before. <laughs> that was new. Remember the opening of the first one was mm-hmm. like going through the big yeah. Look, it's a logo. Bat. And then, yeah, logo. Well, eventually, like, oh, it is a logo. And that Val Kilmer, the way better lawyer than Michael Keaton, because <laughs> he winds up getting fucking first Top billing billing. as Batman forever. Tommy Lee Jones gets second. He's fucking huge off of The Fugitive and other right. things. There's Jim Carrey coming off of what I believe is. Ace um, Ventura. Or is, when is Truman Show? That's not till after this. That's like 96, 97. I think so. I think he had this, and there was that other picture. God, what was the other one? Chris O'Donnell was Sentable Woman. Yeah. Still kind of hot from Sentable Woman. I think that was 92. You're in a theater, dude. They showed us shit, and then they put Forever across it. Bat symbol. Oh, everyone was going crazy. And this is the first time they opened a Batman movie like this, like uh, doing the suiting up montage and it was kind of badass man again we didn't know what we're in for <laughs> so we're watching this i'm like look at this shit man that's fucking cool and they dive right into it mm-hmm. like if you remember batman like oh yeah took a I'm, while i'm sure that was a note was the we would like to see the dark knight like a half an hour before we saw it last time how about some fucking adventure right up front i mean <laughs> look at this they show you the armaments they show you the cave they show you the new fucking batmobile and then they're going to swoop in and introduce you to the brand new fucking Batman, if you believe it's really him, Val fucking Kilmer. Look at those lips. That's why they got it. It's got to be him, right? They got a spotlight on his lips. And then, of course, Alfred breaks up all the <laughs> earnestness with a little joke or a little uh, question. He gets to rock the joke about, I'll get drive through, yeah. which I'm sure they used for a fucking <laughs> yeah, McDonald's, tie in McDonald's or something like that. Although I'm sure McDonald's is like, we ain't going near this fucking thing. Tim Burton scared my child <laughs> with that fucking peeing fucking penguin toy they didn't really pee they had cat woman in a car i think she was whipping a whip i think they had a batman crying figure over two graves like why <laughs> look at that dutch tilt already it's- they're stepping towards the tv show dutch tilt kids is where they angle the camera like they did in oh the old batman tv show Ooh, symbolism or right away, you're just like, holy shit, I can't believe they're actually doing Two-Face. There's the <laughs> scarred corn. Now, right here, as Tommy Lee Jones rocks this monologue, you're like, this might not be bad, man. This Tommy is fucking Yeah, and he's fucking sounding badass. Maybe he's going to give us a monologue. Like, Hen house, outhouse, and dog house. <laughs> but right now, you're okay with it. You're like, all right, I know I've seen the posters, so I know what he looks like on the other side. But like his performance is kind of like, is dark, man. Like, you know, he's given this kind of like dramatic fucking... You know, one of these things happen, one of these things happen, one of these things happen, one of these things happens. Problem is, he never brings Harvey Dent back till the end of the movie. No. From once they go into this shot right here, once he says luck, the movie is fucked. <laughs> That's my theory. Because he goes to 11 yeah. and never modulates again. No, there's never the duality of Harvey Dent. No, it's, it's just, woohoo, I'm crazy. It's one face, and his one <laughs> face seems like it was taken from Jack Nicholson's Joker. Oh, for sure. Like, it feels like he was like, oh, like, I'll play it big, man. Like, these things are fun to do. But this was the genius behind the performance in The Fugitive. Mm. Like, a performance so modulated, but so fucking intense. It won an Academy Award for this fucking man. This performance, I don't know what's going on, man. Now, do you remember, like, stories about them not getting it along or some such shit? About uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Joel Schumacher? Mm-hmm. I, you know, not really. My my theory is that he looked at how much uh, Nicholson made on Batman. So I'm just going to do that. How For much did you get? Like, $80 million. That's, that's not bad, dude. When you see that, like, 1995, you're like, they never did that in the other two movies. Look at them swinging in and shit. But then, you know, they get into this conversational shit. You'll realize pretty quickly, once these two start talking to each other... You don't want a piece of that. You know, <laughs> you go to the bathroom, you can go any number of things. But this is all very bright Gotham, more so than we've ever seen before. Gotham apparently has a lot of fans. Oh, and a lot of neon. <laughs> and big neon stores everywhere. Yeah, Pat Hingle returns for his third oh. fucking uh, uh, time as yeah. Commissioner Gordon. Like, gone is the German expressionism of Anton First. Yeah. And now it's just all like. I don't know who did the. Was it house. Bob Ringwood or something? No, he did the costumes mm. and stuff. Um, it was, Well, interestingly enough, Joel Schumacher, I think, worked in production design before he was a director. Yeah. I think he was the. Was he a production designer on The Wiz or did he write the script for The Wiz? I think he wrote the script for The Wiz 
this feels like the Wiz without Diana Ross. <laughs> yeah, without any black people. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't go too fast. Yeah, you're gonna down. see. There's you're gonna see. There's definitely one more black person that got <laughs> than there was last time. We got one. <laughs> That's a hundred percent improvement <laughs> over the last film, my friend. Put a critical <laughs> tongue back in your mouth. Zero to one. <clears throat> How <clears throat> how fucking uh, they can allow dialogue this stiff to go back and forth where they're like, two, two, should have seen it coming. It's the second day. Oh, come on, man. Like right then and there, all the purple in the face, somebody should have known. Hey, Miley Cyrus, it's her first <laughs> appearance in the movie. The lightest wrecking ball in the world. <laughs> That's not only like throws through the wall, but mm. then rests. And like, just kind of like rolls forward and bounces rest. around a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I did like it when he said kill the bat. Um, that was kind of fucking dope like again like you're sitting here in the movie theater going like all right there's neon on the guns uh, yeah. unnecessary like and and impractical like yes. now you got to like battery power your guns just to make <laughs> sure they light up right like but they they attack the elevator as you can see mm. um you know of course like it's gonna be a quick picture if batman's right behind the doors but he's not there so when the doors open this was a cool moment 1995 you're in a movie theater and Two Face, first time he's ever been done in any medium other than comics, and Batman comes through, man. And this was what we, this was the tough ass Batman of our era, kids. <laughs> Look at this shit. As gritty man. as a gun. This is not like punching Bane in the face in the snow. <laughs> this is true fighting. This is like MMA styles back and forth. <laughs> Batman shooting magical weapons at everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, who are you people? A lot of, yeah, look, look at the fucking thing he throws. There's a lot of like Sam Raimi shots like that. Watch him run out of the room though in this shot coming up after he takes this dude out. Still, I'll take that. A few kicks in the face. That's a Batman I know. Watch this shit. Bomb. Bomb. Nice. Now, this fucking tired-ass Raiders of Lost Ark <laughs> gag that they've been doing for a century now. Yes. Uh, Batman wouldn't do this. He uh -uh. would do that. Now, this is a first sign. Look at him running. <laughs> Yoink. Got to go. Um, this is a first sign of a bold new Batman in movies, Mark. Mm. He saved a life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Normally, by this point in the motion picture, I don't know how many minutes we're in, but maybe ten, seven minutes, seven. Batman would have killed eight people. <laughs> yeah. Cinema Batman. Michael Keaton's Batman doesn't give a shit about anybody. This guy, he, he stopped a dude from falling down. This Batman is a, more of a Dark Knight detective, or closer at least. He uh, it, saved more people than Superman did in Man of Steel. Excellent right fucking there. point. Then this guy is smart enough to figure out if I take this dude's hearing aid uh, i'll be able to pick the lock of this giant safe that's being yanked out i give it to this movie though man say what you will about joel schumacher i think this is the strongest opening of all the batman movies of this era yeah. like batman returns remember the opening of batman returns where we go on that fucking raft ride with the penguin baby <laughs> yeah orphan and, baby like little yeah and then batman never comes in the movie until like 15 20 minutes in yeah, we were counting we were <laughs> this movie they give you batman right up front not only batman but like fucking Batman, they give you a new villain. They give you a little bit of his origin story because he says something about like the uh, the acid that mm -hmm. was responsible for making us the way we are today. They take you into the world of Gotham you've never seen before. The, like the outside of Gotham, you see this island view. Mm -hmm. They're going to show you a Statue of Liberty I've never seen. <laughs> Stuff like this, man. And then there's this magical moment. I'm 1995. I'm in a movie theater and I'm watching this shit, man. When fucking Batman uh, climbs up on on the the helicopter, when we get there, I'll let you know it's going to happen and shit. Go ahead, you. But no, this is this is like Raiders of the Lost Ark, like, and I, it feels very consciously like it. In the we're going to open like it's a Bond movie, we have an adventure that's very self contained. Mm. The the villain will be in it and carry over, but this isn't about this isn't what the movie's about. Just action up front, introduce your hero, do a bunch of shit. And then just go home happy. And what I liked about that, it was very day in the life. And as mm -hmm. much as like in terms, that looks like the shot where he comes up in the bell tower in Batman. It's kind of like, let's see this a little mini adventure. Like mm -hmm. this kind of like Batman animated series would open sometimes a little mini adventure or, or brave and bold. Yeah. We're doing a mini adventure up front and had nothing to do with the rest of the episode. Um, Self-contained opening is the way you described it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, you're you're right, man. It was a strong way to fucking open a movie. Yeah, it's Raiders of Bond. Bond's been doing this for fifty years. Um, this shit was a little dumb as cool, well, but whatever. It's a fucking comic book movie. When he slides the thing just right back, and, put the and, and the back. and the, the grappling hook can go through concrete in this fucking yes. version, and hold up man. like eighteen thousand pounds. <laughs> Last movie is concerned about. Oh, Vicky Vale, how much do you weigh? Yes. 
Wait, what, what, like 80 pounds? Yeah, he's like, I've worked on it since then. <laughs> um, Commissioner Gordon, very concerned with like getting this guy off the fucking safe. <laughs> As if that's like, get him down, get him down. All right, I've done my job. <laughs> Chase Meridian is a total fucking capist, man. She just wants to <laughs> fuck this dude. Something silly. But look at this, dude. Come on. Batman swinging on a cable off a helicopter? That's fucking, Not I'll bad. buy that Batman. Like, I'm, I'm like, all right, there's some things that are a little rough, but that's for the mainstream audience. But hey, this is fucking, this is a Batman I could get behind. He's fucking holding on to the chain. This, well, this is almost Dark Knight Returns-ish. Yeah, but it's also almost, you know, some days you can't get rid of a shark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. There's yes. something bat shark repelling about this as well. Well, we'll see a fucking, we'll see the bomb that he couldn't get rid of <laughs> later on in the movie. Um, it actually happens. But okay, big sequence here. Um, we see him go through the glass. Hey, no more Batman. There's Gotham behind us. Tommy Lee Jones chewing the fucking scenery like you read about. But then this fucking awesome thing is about to happen. I remember sitting in the theater going like, all right, fucking you got my money. You have my attention. Boom. Watch. He turns and he goes, face. He doesn't call him Two-Face. He calls him Face. And I was like, oh, I fucking like that. (laughs) The other moment is when Batman comes into the fight. He's coming up and he's like, he headbutts the window, smashes it open. It's coming right here. And then he's like, you need help, Harvey. He called fucking Harvey Dent Harvey mm-hmm. for the first time in a in a movie, live action movie. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck, I love this. There it is, man. Two Face fighting fucking Harvey. He's calling him fucking Harvey. Tells him he needs help. That's comics, dude. Totally. So at this point, I'm like, right on. We're we're closer to Batman than we in the comics than we were in fucking Batman Returns. And I know a lot of people are like, fuck you, that's sacrilege. But as a Batman fan, yep. This has all the earmarks of what I enjoy about a Batman comic. I prefer better dialogue. <laughs> Better internal Backing. monologues, better acting. But uh, it's got all the earmarks of of what I'm looking for in a Batman movie. I mean, I would like a little more. But again, we didn't know Christopher Nolan was coming with like the most earnest version of Batman ever. Right. And this hadn't gotten bad yet. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a few that. moments where you're like, yeah, I didn't like that line. I didn't like that line. But yeah, it hasn't gone over the top at any point. Look, they put Batman in the fucking water. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they did that in any of the other movies. They put him don't in the so. snow. Haven't put him in the water yet and stuff. Uh, this is a pretty badass idea where the helicopter, Two Face got away with his custom parachute, nice. and the helicopter goes into the face of the fucking Statue of Liberty and creates this kind of Two Face look. Look, fucking Joel Schumacher made Batman wet before Chris Nolan <laughs> in Dark Knight Rises. He beat him there. Yep. Now you get a swooping shot of fucking Gotham City. Look at there. One of the first times you're seeing it this wide. You know, right. we've always been on stage with Anton first building one big wide shot to establish. But now, you know, yeah, we're in computers. the age of computers and digital effects. So we're doing all this shit. Um, at this point in the movie, they slow down after what was a, you know, a fucking very intense 12 to 13 yeah, minutes. Not bad. And you're in, <laughs> right? You're like kind of like right on, man. I certainly better than the opening of Batman Returns. Right. Uh, and, and I was actually kind of impressed by the restraint in the we don't have to give Two Face an origin. He just is, you know. I like, agree. We don't have to spend that shoe leather and tell me, all right, well, he was low. He was a, this isn't DA, and he's ass in the face on the stand, which they'll do later. Oh, they'll in get a quick there. cutaway. <laughs> what in one of the worst <laughs> <laughs> images in a Batman movie you'll ever see? But there's a quick cutaway, man, where they kind of go through his whole fucking origin. But you're right; they didn't take the time to be. Mm-hmm. They didn't take the time that they take. With Enigma. Yeah. With, holy shit. This is, I mean, it, it, there are moments where he's brilliant, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey. And then there are moments where it's just like they needed a more brilliant editor. <laughs> like to just shape it up and maybe maybe somebody would be like rein it in. Like uh, here, things start getting a little bit more. Right. You, you needed the give us, Batman TV show. Give us a script, Jim. Then you can do whatever you want. Give us two. We're going to have two looks at this. Uh, just uh, maybe one more trip. <laughs> can we just do one more draft um what is ed bigley jr doing here yeah i, I mean that's ba- ed bigley jr 1995 is still like a symbol of assurance where you're like oh right on they got fucking bigley man <laughs> like this can't be all bad and shit like that but i mean somebody must have known somebody look at these massive fucking sets uh, and this is at a time where like chris nolan if he was going to do this scene he'd just go find a building yeah and shoot in it yeah, you know, it's an office building in like the the warehouse district. Exactly, it wouldn't be this gigantic set. When he puts on this head device thing, <laughs> I swear he looks kind of like a lesbian gym teacher, <laughs> maybe a lesbian chemistry teacher, because he looks like doesn't he look like a, 
Like uh, he's almost there without yeah. the mullet. He, he's totally there. <laughs> I think I think the mullet is what sells me. Um, this fucking thing here, man. He pulls out the headpiece. All right, it's got a blender on top of it, and you're like, who thought this was fucking funny? And but it's one of those things you're like, eh, let's see. Yeah. Because right away, holy shit, man, <laughs> we're back in action. There's the right. bat signal in the sky, and he's preoccupied. Once again, Batman, Bruce Wayne, rather, wearing glasses, proving that, like... Smart. Or, you know, you can't trust him. Because <laughs> he's like, I know what I saw. It's like, do you? You weren't wearing your fucking bat glasses. No, this is, like the, this is the era of the Stallone who wore glasses but didn't need glasses to be smart. All right. Like, it was the kind of show, like, I'm Brady. Yeah, I was in Tango and Cash. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um... Jim Carrey, this is a step up for him, mm. but Nicole Kidman kind of slumming it, don't you think? Well, I don't know. I mean, she she's always... Mrs. Tom Cruise at this point. She is, but I mean, Days of Thunder was mm. right before it was Days of Thunder and Far and Away, and that was sort of her trajectory. But this would be the biggest movie that she'd been in to date. Is it really? I would think so. I guess, yeah, maybe so. This was her coming out part. Yeah, so this was her, like, you know. In terms of her doing the mainstream of it all. It's amazing how many Mrs. Tom Cruises end up in Batman movies. When he, oh my God, I hadn't <laughs> thought of that. Do you think that was, like, part of it? When they went into Batman Begins, they're like, what do we do? Well, the last time we were successful at Batman, we cast a wife of Tom Cruise. <laughs> Katie <Give me> Holmes. <laughs> He's been remarried, boss. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Get me a new one. Um, I, I also didn't quite buy this fucking storyline where Ed, Edward Nigma is just like, I fucking hate Bruce Wayne because he walked away from me in conversation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the sort of the, the misguided geek as villain. It's like, why, you Wearing just... Sally Jesse Raphael's frame. Yeah. Now, this is fucking badass. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Like when this happened, uh, the pneumatic tube to the Batcave, this was a nice addition where I'm like, oh, I'll fucking take that. However... Is kind of like the bat poles to some degree, but mm -hmm. look at this shit. Ooh. That's Iron Man before Iron Man, totally. son, right there, man. And that's Jarvis. You, <laughs> am I, you're absolutely fucking right. There's Iron Man before Jar Iron Man. Jarvis is in mm -hmm. his fucking head. What do you need, Master? It's a close shot on his face, kind of mm -hmm. like what John Favreau would come and do. And if you look at the credits of this movie, John Favreau is listed as an. Extra. I know. I saw that. Isn't that fucking strange? <laughs> He's been sitting there for like what was it? 10, 15 years I going, what to do. I'm going to steal that shot and make it better. <laughs> I'm going to improve upon it and show him a real fucking superhero movie. God damn it. Um, if you light the back signal, you got to expect at least a 30 minute wait because <laughs> he has to leave work where he was, right. goes back to the cave, Wayne Manor and cave to get the car, then drives out to the city. Now here's where I start going, huh? I don't, number one, I don't like any superhero puts their hands on his, their hips. No. That, they don't do that in the real world. People are like, superheroes aren't real, Kev. Well, bullshit. <laughs> Fuck it. That's the point not taking. Batman would never land on the roof and be surprised by anybody, <laughs> let alone Dr. Chase Meridian. Yeah. I don't care if rerun from what's happening is waiting for him on the roof. <laughs> He would have known that shit coming in. He's landing. He's like, no, Roger, no rerun, no rent. <laughs> Trust me, what we're saying is more entertaining what these two fuckers are saying. Anytime this movie stops to talk to Chase Meridian, and this is no knock on Nicole uh, Kidman. She's game with the material. She's not the problem. No. The whole character's the problem. You're like, this fucking blows. And they're kind of making a Lois Lane type relationship for Batman. It's like Lois Lane meets Bond Girl. I guess. You know, like the, the woefully. Yeah, like she's Christmas Jones. Yes. Like the, the, <laughs> the, somehow she's a doctor of things who shows up on, in her lingerie on the roof and has the keys to the bat signal. And like, why are you here? Yeah, why does she have so much fucking access? Isn't it crazy when you look at a rooftop? version of uh, a, a version of rooftop scene in this movie compared to like a chris nolan rooftop <laughs> scene where they actually literally went to a rooftop right somewhere chicago or something like that these fuckers are comfy on a set <laughs> very comfy there's a ceiling over their fucking heads yeah, there's a little fan over in the corner just blowing her hair just so oh my and speaking of blowing it's probably <laughs> fluffer standing by for fucking everybody man but wait commissioner gordon shows up in his jammies <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Like he's sleeping in the office. Look at this shit. Ah! I hate women. <laughs> Batman is so scared of women, he jumps off a roof in this movie. <laughs> and and fucking Commissioner Gordon is the king of the cock block. <sighs> Look at this shit. Women. I don't know what you do. Way to alienate the audience, buddy. 
Fifty-one percent of the audience be exact. <laughs> you fucking dick. Now look at that. Badass. That is very, but that's badass. But that's also atomic batteries to power. Very, we're getting close to, and they go right from that to a Dutch tilt shot. Yes. So Joel Schumacher's influence clearly was I'll watch the TV show. I remember the TV show. I'll do the you know bits of the TV show. They'll love it. I want a little more Dozier in this. Can we get more Dozier? Yeah. yeah. He did. He was not a comic book guy. Uh, you could kind of it kind of. It reeks. No, almost nobody involved was a comic book guy in any of these movies. Tim Burton, no. he didn't read the comics either. Didn't like them, apparently. No, he said that, too. So I wouldn't give a shit. Think about that. There was an era when the people who made your comic book movies <laughs> didn't even read the source material. Yes. They were like, that's for kids. Yeah. Four we'll movies better. worth. Nobody cracked a book. This is where shit gets so fucking terrible. See, in that other scene, when they're on the roof with Chase Meridian, mm. she references Catwoman. She doesn't say Catwoman. But she makes that joke about like vinyl and a whip and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So there, there's reference to a previous universe. And I will say this as well. When she, when he first lands in the opening sequence in Gotham City, you know, before Two Face fucking starts chewing the scenery, she, you know, he's like, I've read your book. Fascinating. And she's like, uh, it's not every girl that makes a superhero's night's table. The first time that Batman is referred to in the movies as a superhero, I believe. Think about it. I don't right. think they call them a superhero in Batman, mm -hmm. and I don't think they call him a superhero in Batman Returns. He was the Dark Knight detective. He was a vigilante. But then in a world where you got to soften shit up, suddenly the language gets a little right. different. Suddenly he's a superhero. And it also implies that there's other superheroes. Like I wish. But yeah. they do later yeah. on make a reference. Yeah, to Metropolis. To Metropolis. But yeah, it was the beginning of we're building a universe. I bullshit. I don't know that at all. I don't know. I think it was the beginning of them going, just hey, Dark Knight Detective. That's a little <laughs> depressing. That reminds me of that piss and penguin toy from McDonald's. Like, tame it down. How about they're all superheroes, right? There you go. By the next one, I'm sure, I think somebody uses the term super friends. <laughs> so Superman never has a problem with the super friends. We go from the fucking TV show to right to the cartoon. I'm t we're talking through the building of the plot of this movie because this is where shit falls in the toilet. Yeah. Oh well, there's no plot to this movie. Like as near as I can tell, Edward Nigma doesn't really want anything but to know shit, right? About people who don't matter, and to beat Bruce Wayne inexplicably. Yeah, for some reason because he didn't. Because that hi. one meeting, yeah. Because yeah. he's like, I met you for a few minutes. He gave him lots of time, too. And then totally. He was like, I got to get out of here. And he was like, look, I don't think you should be fucking around with people's brains. And because of that, like an insolent child, <laughs> we have to deal with fucking Jim Carrey and red hair for the rest of the movie. But when he gets into the Riddler gear and shit. It's not bad. There are moments where he's absolutely brilliant. Mm. This whole scene nah. is not one of them. <laughs> now, it's not his fault. They give him a bunch of material, and I'm sure mm. he's adding anything that made you chuckle in the scene. Yeah. I'm sure he was the author of, but this is like Ooh, deadly. They put the movie into crawl speed for fucking that scene on the roof and then this scene. And this is where you're sitting in the audience getting that sinking feeling, particularly when it's like, wait a second, the plot is he's stealing minds. Like yeah. mind control. He's putting holograms into people's heads and he gets shit out of it because why? And I realized that like, look, the plot of the first one, you know, is like, well, it ain't mind control. No. And the plot of the second one is, well, it ain't mind control. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. You walk out of those two movies, you're like, well, they had faults, but at least they weren't about fucking villains who want to control your mind. <laughs> 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 now you get to Batman forever and you're like. Jesus Christ, they just served up a big old helping of fucking mind control. <laughs> um, this is now the second movie in which the villain, one villain tosses somebody out of a window. What was the other one? Catwoman. Oh, my God. So, look, you're right, dude. So, it sounds like this is such a script by committee. They're like, what were the beats that worked in all the other movies? Mm -hmm. Let's steal each one of those beats. And... Make an ironic comment on it. So, instead yeah. of, like, you know, him going right out the window... He's going to hold him there for a second and then pull the headgear off and then let him want go. That. And Ed Bagley Jr. becomes Catman. <laughs> <laughs> he's licked below. He's just, or he's licked by a bunch of giant fish in the water, <laughs> so he becomes fish face. Black Manta. Um, look at him chewing that fucking scenery. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> it would give him, like, it would look lead to a successful 10 years, man, of that kind of stuff. Yep. But he's game. He's trying his ass off in this movie. He is. Like, I don't know that Tommy Lee Jones is trying as much as doing something. Yeah. And what he's doing is, not good. is irritating <laughs> all of us. Yeah. Ugh. Um, 
21 minute mark kids just mark here we go look at this shit this ain't the mm-hmm. 21 minute mark we are at 24 24 57 about to be 25 batman really? in a courtroom <laughs> leaping out of the like he was sitting in the fucking audience in court in costume <laughs> The whole time, enough to be like, oh, shit, I'm going to stop the acid. And they caught him in slow-mo. It looks like a movie. Like I, I, I wonder if there's a whole scene that they shot or they just shot that little news piece. Here's, I also want to know how there's acid that will burn through his face, but not the manila folder he used to cover the other half of his face. <laughs> <laughs> this acid is repelled by manila folders. Yeah, what kind of fickle acid is that? I'll give you that. But I will say this, dude. This fucking picture, this Two-Face origin is truer to the comic's origin than Chris <laughs> Nolan's Two-Face origin. It is indeed. I mean, that's how Two-Face became Two-Face. Yeah. Maroney throws fucking acid mm. in his face in a courtroom. Somebody did read a book. Yeah. <laughs> so say what you will about Joel Schumacher and co, but there's there's a little bit there. Hey, man, that's Lieutenant Chan, isn't it? Lieutenant Tao from fucking from, uh, The Closer. Oh, nice. Nice pull. Yeah, man. Diversity. I action. saw him. Yeah, I saw him. I spotted him and shit. I can spot a fucking closer. In my <laughs> you, you, can, you can spot an Asian guy in a Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fucking video monitor footage in this. I know. And how do you fake that shit? How do you fucking, what, he just thought about it and made the tape? Apparently. Um, Goodbye, cruel world. I got to say, man, fucking the commiss just phoning it in. This dude's like, yep, it's a suicide. Sure enough. He's just like, I lost the edge, dude. <laughs> He's never going to be Bunny in the wire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the commission's never going to come up with something as brilliant as Hamsterdam <laughs> to clean up his corners. He's just like, yep, suicide. Moving what do you on. say? I'm going to go put my jammies on. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, there you go, dude. Nah. You're always, always complaining, but there you go. There Number, our first black person. Our, and it's a woman. <laughs> in Gotham. Yes. What and they refer to as a twofer, I believe. Yes, pretty much. Um, Granted, she's a secretary and not like a judge. That which is, would have been the other way to go. Well, or a mayor. True. Which <laughs> I believe is what, <laughs> that's what you get later on. Yeah. It runs the spectrum of from secretary to mayor. A black person can be anything <laughs> in Batman's universe. It can be any civil servant. <laughs> <laughs> anything but a hero kids remember that Nuh-uh. only white people are heroes this is what's her face from the abyss man it totally is isn't it when she was one the night one. yeah well, that's it yes. <laughs> um she's so damn friendly in that movie so lovable part of that lovable crusty crew of folks nah. in the underwater good to see her back she's in a lot of his pictures joel schumacher really? she seems to be like a good luck charm she's his muse yeah yeah, yeah. why didn't you tell Jason how muse. much they suck <laughs> <laughs> she was he was like i want you to say snoogans in the scene she's like i don't understand it <laughs> what are you talking about um the uh why does he live in like steerage where, where is that kind of everyone in gotham that? lives in impossible apartments <laughs> corners like look at these walls and shit and he's got a big bruce wayne poster right there but he went south on him. I, I didn't like this either, that it's like, so wait, he just took his costume from that guy? Yeah. Eventually. That's, like, a, that's a nice beret, though. Yeah, it's fair enough. Uh, but it's, it's you know, there's no, we saw Catwoman make her outfit. Yes. We that's don't, the thing that happened. We don't get to see him. Like, he kind of designs his outfit, but mm. then he winds up just taking the outfit off that fucking Well, then he designs the sort of uh, the sparkly rhinestone onesie. That he wears later. How come fucking Wayne Manor isn't better patrolled than this? That anybody can drive up to the front gates and I mean, look at that's a clear shot, dude. You yeah. take a fucking twenty. No, 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 I'm just gonna say a gun. Like I know it, <laughs> take a twenty-two <laughs> rifle. It feels like an old elephant gun. You could shoot, yeah, with a fucking uh, a bumper shoot. You could fuck. What do they call those things? Uh, <laughs> what was the f- a blunderbuss? Oh um, yes, nice pull. But uh, this fucking thing, you can walk right up to the gate and affix what could be an explosive. Mm-hmm. This nobody is the cares. first time that nobody's fucking watching the front gate. This is also the first time that they went to the real world. Man, that's an movie. actual building. That's New York City, kids. They, I remember when they were making this movie, they're like, we're shooting Batman in New York this time. And it was for just for a few exteriors. But they actually went to the real world, man. It was probably some tax incentive. There's another yeah. goddamn Dutch chill. <laughs> <laughs> Can't just not tilt that camera, man. They've always got a fucking... I, mean, I will say, Val Kilmer looks fucking good as Bruce Wayne. Touch tilt again. Really? You See, uh, yeah, I mean, what? Physically better than yeah, Michael Keaton? I mean, he just like... Certainly better head of hair and stuff. This is the, the, the ultimate era of Val Kilmer. 
this is when he was at his, you know, like Iceman hottest. Oh, yes. You know, like the Saint era. <laughs> one, but one could argue that this was the beginning of the end as well. Well, yeah. Um, nobody came back from this good. Yeah. Well, although it made money, man. Like, that's the thing. He was another one and done, though. He's just like, I don't need to come back. I'm, thanks. But I think that had more to do with him and Joel Schumacher didn't get along. I right. remember. Because around this time, people were like, Kilmer is notoriously the hardest person in the world to fucking work with. This scene right here, Batman can't discern between a woman working out and a woman getting attacked. Yes. So he knocks the fucking door down. Batman <laughs> has no experience with hand to hand combat. It's kind of like Batman, not even year one, but month two. <laughs> if he can't fucking figure out what's going on there, man. Um, and also, why does she have a fucking heavy bag in her office? <laughs> like, this is a place of business, lady. See, fucking, this character is a complete mystery. Wait till you see her in her house later on, her fucking apartment. I think everybody just lives in their offices. I'm telling you, kids, anytime these two fuckers get together, go out, take a piss, go grab some fucking popcorn, mm. jerk off. You can totally <laughs> tug one out in the span of time they have this conversation, man. So during that mm. time, let's just kick back and reflect on the good times we shared with Val Kilmer. Mm. Real genius. Oh, popcorn. he is brilliant in that movie. He's great. Uh, Top Gun, he's mm -hmm. fun in that movie. Willow, dude, this is oh. Mad Mardigan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Solo with a sword. Mad Mardigan got to play Batman. Jim fucking Morrison. The now, was Doors. That, was The Doors before or after this? I think it's before. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. No, I know it's before. Yeah, like 93, I want to say 91, 92, 92 probably. Uh, True Romance, he played Elvis. Mm -hmm. Thunderheart. Remember that well, one? Yeah. Run for the mountains. <laughs> 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 Doc fucking Holiday, dude. Oh. I'm your Huckleberry. Come on. This is fucking Doc Holiday in Tombstone. Even as recently as Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, mm -hmm. in which he is fucking brilliant. All This dude cannot not act well, except in this movie. Well, because here's the thing. I am convinced that there are actors who should be character actors who somehow get like pushed into the star right. spotlight and they're better when they're character actors. Like, like McConaughey, the McConaissance is all because he realized. <laughs> is that a term? <laughs> That's a term. The McConaissance is all because he realized I'm not going to be, I'm not like how to lose a guy in 10 days. I'm a character actor. I'm going to be the guy standing next to the star who makes him look better. Hmm. You know, and, and this, this is a, that's who Kilmer is. And that's who Kilmer is. Like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is his best performance in years because he's not the lead of that movie. But he gets that's right, man. But Especially gets, when you think about Tombstone, where it's just yeah. like he doesn't have to do the heavy lifting, but he is that movie. Yeah, like you, Kurt and Russell can stand there and do all that shit. I'm gonna be your Huckleberry. Right and here. some people are like, oh, it's the part. Doc Holliday's more showy. Bullshit. Go look at the other Wyatt Earp movie <laughs> where fucking what's his name, Dennis Quaid, yeah. where he played fucking Wyatt Earp, and nope. it just sits there, dude. Like he does interesting things, but. Forced into the lead, shoehorned into the lead as Batman. I don't. He just I, there's moments where he he's in a completely different movie. Yeah, because he's trying else. to bring a thing to something that doesn't like it can't hold it. Joel Schumacher loves to pull out, dude. He does the same. I mean, that's what I've heard. <laughs> this is that, he does the same pull out like shot. <laughs> sexy. He does that same pull out shot in uh, Batman and Robin when mm. they introduced the Poison Ivy character and they're doing all these weird acrobatics and shit like that. But this, as a Batman fan in 1995, suddenly you're like the circus. Yeah. And I know Robin's in mm -hmm. this. The flying Grayson's, like, you're getting, you're getting a little happy. You're there's, like, there's some good stuff in this sequence. Like, this is probably the most beginning to end solid sequence in the film. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that and that opening, I would say. Yeah, well, the opening I mean, is pretty dazzling. It's got some, some waffly shit in there. But Who's like, this guy? Why couldn't they have given this to Adam West? <laughs> <laughs> like, with all due respect, I'm sure this dude is, is fucking like, uh, he, he's a good guy and a nice actor. What's his name? Daniel Reichert, man. Hmm. Last thing he did was an episode of Major Crimes, but come on. Fair enough, but yeah. Robin's mom looks like Tammy Faye Baker. Did you see that fucking amount of makeup? <laughs> wow. Holy shit. I felt she was going to start praying for our souls and crying and asking for money. A lot of dudes in body paint. I don't understand this circus. Um, look at that <laughs> big brown floor? eye in the floor, man. <laughs> <laughs> Winking up at you. Uh, you're right. He does cut a dashing figure. And we all love the fact that, look at them. They're wearing Robin's costume. Mm -hmm. Now, it meant that later on, you know, they're probably not going to use this. They're going to use some variation of it. And we know what the costume winds up looking, but a nice nod right here sure. where you're like, oh, crap. But and then the first time Robin saves Batman, he's wearing that shit. 
Yeah. He's he's wearing the togs. That's true, and he's got a little domino mask. This mm-hmm. this sequence would be at this whole sequence would be really cool if Robin wasn't forty two years old. <laughs> but that's what fucking bums me out about this. Robin, like all of this works better mm. if Robin is a little boy. But right. they didn't do it. They fucking cast the twenty five, thirty year old Chris O'Donnell, who is a man as Robin. And so none of it fucking resonates or yeah, works. Like why does he have to be ward of the state? Yeah. Like why are you staying with this? If I'm Robin and they're like, you got to stay with this billionaire. I'm like, why? They're like, cause your parents are dead. I'm like, you want me to suck his dick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this. And you get on a bike and you fucking go. Yeah, white slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right next to Bruce's old gossip Gertie, man. Uh, Elizabeth Sanders, the oh. wife of Bob King. Indeed. I believe. Um, uh, the beginning, the uh, first appearance of Gossip Gertie means that guy's popping up soon. <laughs> the kneel down shot of the guy just looking up, man. Anytime they cut to like a random who's not famous in a close up, I'm like, whose dick did this guy suck? <laughs> whose fucking boobies was he chewing on or something like that? It just seems like a favor shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this is why they didn't. It could have been Adam West, dude. Think about yep. it. What a nice little nod that would have been. They kept Adam West out of all these movies. And fuck, they could have got him in this one. <laughs> and they really could have put him in Batman and Robin. Shit, he could have played Batman in and that Everybody one. else showed up. Why not him? Totally. And they were so fucking camp at that point, he would have fit in perfectly. Um, still, 1995, you like the Flying Graysons. You know what's going to happen. Well, in the comics, it's a little bit different. Mm. Here, Two-Face winds up being responsible. Um if you're Batman and you're watching the shit, are you really that impressed? Like, if it's a little child doing it, maybe you're like, wow, that's fucking brave for a kid. But th- we just saw Batman swing from the bottom of a helicopter right. with no fucking net. Like, would you really clap or would you just be like, whatever, I could do this? Yeah. Um, Two Face got a ringleader outfit uh, that is Two Face style. Mm. He really put his thought into it. Now, why isn't Bruce like acknowledging that this is his friend? What? Like he just, it feels like he's like a stranger. Who are you? Yeah, right. Because it's just like, he's hey like, man, it's around. Harvey Dent. What's yeah, happening? Yeah. yeah, there is no. He doesn't fucking get his his back. Like, hey everybody, I know he's loud, and I know he is turning yeah. in a performance that <laughs> is embarrassing for all concerned. But he's my friend. <laughs> I knew him. I knew him once. The purple fucking head, man. There's got to be some sort of sexual illusion there. Yes. And why is the circus being televised? <laughs> lie for free <laughs> yeah, why that? are people going <laughs> we can just watch it at home there's that bomb some days you just can't get, get rid, rid of, of a bomb, bomb as seen in batman the 1960s mm-hmm. movie and also the bomb that we see in the dark knight rises <laughs> <Where's your trailer? laughs> that bomb gets a lot of work it does it had its own reconnaissance oh hey second black dude that's the mayor, dude. That's wow. what I'm telling you. So you got an assistant, an executive assistant. Right. Let's be clear. And the mayor. Yes. That's the two power centers in this movie. They're running the gamut. The only two people, honestly, who seem to come from the real world. <laughs> the way they're portrayed, the way they deliver their lines. Everyone else is a fucking cartoon, man. <laughs> it's just nuts. Um, look, listen to this. Harvey, <laughs> I'm Batman. Oh, come on. That would never fucking happen. Mm. You know why? Because Batman's so well trained. He wouldn't even let fucking Harvey Dent get through that speech. He's just like, we have so the bomb with T and before he'd say T. <laughs> yeah. Right in his neck. <laughs> and then you'd hear that fucking Hans Zimmer. <laughs> and then he'd light a bridge on fire to let you know he was there and shit like that. Look, the Graysons, even Tammy Faye Grayson, mm-hmm. very heroic. They're like, we're going to help. And how they're going to help is by getting rid of the bomb and shit. So, they start working in heroics into the Batman and Robin origin. Rather, mm-hmm. in the comics, that's, there were no bombs. Right, they just get killed. It was just Bazooka's men cut the the uh, trapeze cord, mm-hmm. um, and, and maybe maybe there's gunplay involved. No, they just cut the yeah, trapeze. Cord. And they just fall to their deaths. And you know, Robin or Dick Grayson, little Dick doesn't. Little Dick, little this is Big Dick. dick. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants Big Dick in a movie, man. <laughs> Not like this movie. There's only one person who may want a Big Dick in this movie. I got to say, man, even though motherfucker flipping his coin, 1995, I'm sitting in the theater going, that's that's Batman. That's what you want. Kind of. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, he's a little garish. And yeah, it's a little big in color and stuff. And yes, it's art directed within an inch of its life. But he flips a coin to make a decision. The coin has the right markings on it. You're sitting there going, all right, we're fucking close, I think. But... (laughs) 
Look at him. Look at him go. This sets you up for Robin as the hero. Mm-hmm. Um, and once again, like Batman kicking ass on the floor, but he can't catch these people. <laughs> you know what I'm Not saying? Just one. Like, I got your mom. Yeah. Anybody. He's like, well, I could get your dad <laughs> and your brother, but your mom, I was able to save. Right. Meanwhile, this guy's like hard at work trying to save everybody. He's like, I got to get rid of this bomb. <laughs> I Not- got it. Not knowing that fucking he'll be dealing with a much bigger bomb <laughs> in the next movie <laughs> called Batman and fucking Robin. <sighs> um, so there you have it. It's the Robin origin, kind of. Ish. Unfortunately, Robin is the age that his father should be yes. when Robin well, I like that shot. That's not bad. This is nice. And, and watch. The next shot coming up is nice, too, when he looks through. Mm-hmm. Imagine how much more poignant that would be. If this boy was nine, as opposed to <laughs> fucking 86, 38 years old, <laughs> who's going to pay the mortgage? <laughs> Look at him, man. He looks like a fucking gay hustler. You know what I'm saying? He looks like he's like looking down at him going lips or hips. Like <laughs> There's nothing Robin-esque about it. He's got the earring in. He's fucking got the open collar and shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nice shot, man. Look, Joel Schumacher is a better filmmaker than I am. He knows how to compose an image and shit like that. Joel Schumacher probably like, give me some big horses for this yeah, place. <laughs> Carve me some fucking horses. Um, once again, we're back at Wayne Manor. Different Wayne Manor than we've been at for mm. the previous two flicks from what I understand. Stately Wayne Manor. And uh, what you have here is... Uh, to establish that Dick Grayson is a hard ass, you're going to see that he starts calling Alfred. Ow. Oh, God. Ugh. It is so fucking painful. It's dude. about as bad as people calling Anakin Skywalker Annie. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about that. It's so fucking horrible. What's your problem, Annie? Do you know Shut up. Anybody, any hard ass motorcyclist who paints like a fucking Robin on their helmet? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> because there aren't any. And again, dude, he's just like, why am I staying here? You think I'm going to fuck this old man? Is that what you want, <laughs> billionaire boy? I mean, Fine. I'll do it. And he drops down. <laughs> oh, sir, sir. You shut up, Al. Come okay. in my mouth. I'm a carny folk. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you want, Bruce? <laughs> That's the other thing. If this kid says Bruce once in this movie, <laughs> he says it 96 times per minute just to reassure us or remind us mm. that the character's name is Bruce. Everything is fucking Bruce. Dick calls him Bruce so fucking much. He's like, spare me your sermon, Bruce. Yeah. See, Chris O'Donnell just doesn't do petulant. It's not yeah. a thing he can no. achieve. When we, when we think about his, his greatest role in, uh, in um, uh, Sense Sentable of a Woman, Woman, he was soft-hearted. Yeah. He was a good dude and shit like that. He was not like... This, this hard ass case. This, although this mo- moment was cool because mm. this is where Bruce Wayne, yeah, for the first time in any Batman movie, said the word Metropolis, mm. which indicated <laughs> there's a Superman out there. I know it's, it's expanding the universe a little bit. But they weren't doing it intentionally. They weren't going like, "Hey, yeah, we're we're, pl- we're not planting seeds." They were just making references. Going and honestly, they're like, "Throw that in for the fat comic book geeks." <laughs> and I'll tell you. This fat comic yeah. book geek was very happy about it. Yeah. I Later, remember turning to my friends being like, Metropolis. Later on, it was like, I need a name. Uh, Bat Boy. Nightwing. Yes. Do something. Yes. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> Nightwing. They're so close. Foreshadowing. Holy shit. He's in the Green Hornets garage. <laughs> this looks exactly like it. There it is again, dude. It's just like, you had to hang out at many Bucker bars, Bruce. <laughs> is this a garage or car museum, Bruce? It could be you could play a fucking drinking game <laughs> to the amount of times that Chris O'Donnell's Robin calls him fucking Bruce. And and I'll be honest with you, booze would rough out some of the smooth oh, out some man. of the rough spots in oh, this picture. Don't think it hadn't roughed out some of the <laughs> <laughs> smooth out some of the spots for me the first eight times I tried to watch it. Um this think about it. Right now, it's such a weird scene to try to form. It's such a weird relationship. It makes no sense. Why mm. would these two grown men hang out together? You yeah. know, uh, but if he was a boy, it all works. Why right. not go with a boy? Yeah. Was it I, too creepy? Was it, it? I mean, it's always been the problem with Robin is is the how can you buy Batman as a hero if he's putting a child in danger all the time? But, but that kid's got to work through shit just like him. He recognizes in the boy what he knew of himself. Like the only way, and we're coming up on it. The <laughs> only way I could deal with my horrible past, and it's not a Batman movie until he fucking flashes <laughs> back and his parents being killed. Gets a little emo and somber and shit. Mm. But he realizes that he's just like, the only way this kid's going to get through the pain, fight through the pain, is by going after the bad guys and shit. So, yeah, it seems weird that I'm using this child as a <laughs> human shield. But, like, he wants it that way. <laughs> he's a good soldier. Yeah. Good soldier. Good soldier. You couldn't imagine 
Chris O'Donnell being anybody's good soldier. Not really. Even Not this guy. Um, once Pearls. again, man, Pearls, Roses. Joe Chill. Yeah, a little fucking Joker cameo, mm-hmm. kind of. Obviously not the same actor and shit, but I don't know, man. It is, and to be fair, this shot actually looks like the cover of a comic book. Yeah. Like that is, you know, fucking, that's a very iconic image, Bruce. That's a year one happening right there. Um, Blue fire. Look at this shit, man. Fucking Joel Schumacher did Bat Funeral before chris nolan he did he like so it's like a madonna video but okay <laughs> <laughs> just like brad i'll take it there <laughs> um it's kind of grim man couldn't they have had the funerals on separate days <laughs> spread out the misery <laughs> i mean it's a little much to take too much they stage. add mythos they add a little bit to the mythos here this fucking red book um mm. which you know he talks about later on when he's talking to dr chase meridian chasing meridian around man this movie is all about how difficult it is for batman to fucking finally own up to the fact that he wants pussy when <laughs> and he's willing to it. walk away from being batman to he get a girl that but it's he's so virginal that he's just like i had sex i want to stop all this <laughs> my life's different i'm a big boy now and he shuts down the cave and all that shit um once again you know he's reflecting and muttering and and then, of course, Alfred is suddenly fucking there. <laughs> He's just like, I wasn't aware that you were talking to me. I wasn't. <laughs> um, you were muttering again, sir. He's just like, I just want to hang out with somebody that doesn't call me Al. <laughs> Please call me Alfred the way you do, sir. Have you fucked the boy yet? <laughs> <laughs> He's not a boy, Al. <laughs> it's like 46 years. <laughs> He's older than me, Alfred. <laughs> And no, I haven't fucked him. If not now, <laughs> when? If not me, who? Oh. The signal, Alfred. Well, he'll keep. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> he's so sweet. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him, man. It's just, I, I, I get it. I get he's thinking about like my, my fucking parents are gone. I just don't. Whatever. So remember back in the beginning where fucking like all oh, a bunch of action shit was going on and we're like, right the fuck on, this man. This is a movie. There's Two-Face. And then a couple minutes and we just come off the big circus fucking sequence and mm-hmm. shit. And then they go into like just boring. Every time we're reminded boring that action. somebody wrote this movie poorly, it just stops. But in those days, it was acceptable because, again, you were starving. You were drowning, you know, not drowning. You were starving and you were, you were, you were, you were in the desert and you were fucking thirsty. So anybody that gave you even something that looked like a drink of water, you would fucking suck it down and be like, oh, refreshing. And even though you'd be like going, I think this is half piss. You were like, I don't care. It's quite quenching my fucking thirst. And it's like somebody hands you a cookie and you're like, oh, this looks amazing. You eat it and it's a shit cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, well, it looked good. And I think there's some sugar in it, but mostly there's chewy shit pieces in it. Yeah, there's peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like nuts in my cookies, especially with nuts that's in shit. These are not two great days that taste great together. Um, Batmobile, folks. Uh, shit. And this is the new Batmobile, uh, the one that you haven't seen before this movie. It's got all new features, like old-timey video. (laughs) (laughs) What's that, Batman? The slowest car chase in cinema history that they felt like they sped up by simply (laughs) dutching the fucking camera, the Dutch tilt. Oh, it's crazy. And Fuckers with their neon guns, man. It kills me. This is another throwback. Remember they had the old lady standing in front of the Batmobile Mm -hmm. and Batman Returns? That must have tested well, too, because they're like, let's do it. But now it's Two-Face, motherfucker. This ain't your grandpapa's (laughs) fucking Batman movie. This is Two-Face, bitch. And then the Batmobile starts doing more unrealistic things. That happened in Batman Returns. Remember it Mm -hmm. had that fucking pneumatic drop that just spun around. So we're used to it by this point. Like, all right, they're never going to give us real. But it's also fucking slow. This guy just keeps screaming. <laughs> In lieu of any script, they were just like, Tommy, give us 10 different screams. Yeah, what do you got? Ah, <laughs> Batman. Ah. Oh, guns. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, uh, I, I don't know why people think the bat chasing the Batmobile is compelling. No. This is the only place. Where Batman runs from fucking criminals is in the Batman movies. Every Batman movie, he's in a Batmobile. He's always on the lamb. Like, think yes. about it. First time you see the Batmobile in Batman, Tim mm-hmm. Burton's 1989 Batman, he's like, get in the car. What car? <laughs> and they get in the car. And what do they do? 
run like pussies like pussies they run into the fucking night and they cause a lot of accidents mm-hmm. batman returns uh i can't remember if he was on the lamb in that one as much yeah, the Never. car did a few more things yeah but we just don't like driving slowly through gotham like yeah patrolling shit and then later on the bat ski boat which was useless mm-hmm. um but here we go, man. Another, like, they're like, well, they love seeing Batman. Even in the Nolan Batman. Yep. Batman Begins. Like, oh, they love seeing the Batmobile get chased. But then this egregious bullshit happens. What the fuck is this? This is like something out of Jaws the Revenge. Oh, it's so terrible. Like, Knight Rider would be ashamed to do a thing like this. But it allows them to do another nod to the mm-hmm. Batman TV show, which is we're climbing up a building yes. on our sides. How? But it's a car this time. <laughs> How I mean, does he get the car off the fucking roof? Oh, I don't fucking know. But watch this shot, dude. You really half expect fucking Sammy Davis <laughs> Jr. to pop out a fucking window with a green hornet like right there. Just like, hello, oh, Batman. Hey, it's fucking Jerry Lewis. <laughs> and what does Batman do? He leaves the villain yep. there on the ground. A guy who just killed a car full of his own thugs. He ran from him. He doesn't try to stop him. Like Batman's, arrest anybody. Batman's job is to puss out in this movie. Left <laughs> and fucking right. To just go in the other direction. And you know what? Puss out is too good a term for him because pussy is awesome. <laughs> so this guy's asshole it out, He's man. A big fan. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's just, it's not Batman, kids. But there was enough Batman in it and shit like that where you're like, for 95, mm. this was, it, it sort of got the job done. It scratched an itch. Um, I know this can't be the fucking, they can't do the real origin of Robin's name. Because mm. I don't even know if there is one. But the one that they gave us, that's not it, right? No. Where he's just like, I flew in like a Robin. My dad yeah. said I flew in like a Robin. Blah, 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 blah. Who's that for? They're like, oh, that's for non-comic book people. They just want to know why he's called Robin. They have questions. Who gives a shit? Yeah, nobody's <laughs> ever until, in the history of this character, nobody's ever been like, hey, why is he called Robin anyway? But they felt the need to explain it. And once again, Gotham, the emptiest city on the planet. <laughs> oh, fuck Can we Philly sound stages? Go no. to the bathroom, kids, because shit's about to get fucking, about to get. Is this where we meet Debbie Mazur and Drew Barrymore for yeah. the first time? Yeah. Ooh. This seems like a great time to put a pin in it. That's right. I know you all hate that fucking phrase on the show. That means, no, we're not done. There's more. He's going away. Yeah, we're going to go away for this week. We're going to split this bad boy in two, man. So uh, walk away for the moment, kid. Shake it off. Go take a knee because, fuck, this is where Batman Forever starts uh, swirling down the toilet, if you will. So go out, uh, watch a little Chris Nolan Batman, take in some other Batman, cleanse your palate, if you will. Read a comic book, for Christ's sakes. Uh, go watch Comic Book Men, now back on the air uh, for this season of 3B after um, uh, The Walking and The Talking Dead on AMC. And then come back next week, man, and me and Mark Bernard will finish up our commentary track on Batman Forever, the Joel Schumacher uh, epic. For Joel's first stab at the Batman franchise, he didn't kill it with this one, so then he stabbed it to death with the next one, Batman and Robin. So come back uh, next week, and we'll do Batman Forever commentary uh, with Mark Bernard in part two. Same fat time, same fat channel, smodcast.com. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at Smodcast.com. Hi, I'd like to bring this meeting to order with a brief prayer of thanks to our Savior. Our Batman, who art in Gotham, cowled be thy mane. Now, y'all know Kevin Smith's a big old fat man, but did you know his favorite hero is Batman, the Dark Knight who punches dirty turkeys in the face? That's right, Cape Crusader. Punch all those turkeys. Punch them in their turkey necks. So once a week, now this no fly list fatty's gonna put the food down and get chatty about fatty, and this turkey gets wordy about Gotham like it's a real place. He ain't got time for his wife or daughter. Catwoman's losing Batman and Carter. Go get a Cape Crusader. You want a pussy on now? <laughs> get ready, Turkeys. We going bat shit. Babbling about the bat with old Kevin Smith. Now here's the fat man who loves Batman himself, Fat Kevin Smith. Get on out here, Turkey. Welcome to Fat Man. I'm Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. Uh, all right, kids. We're back in the Fat Cave. 
with our good friend Mark Bernardin, and we are watching the shit out of Batman Forever. 1995, Joel Schumacher directed Batman Forever with Val Kilmer himself as uh, the mighty, mighty Batman and, and uh, Jim Carrey as the Riddler and Tommy Lee Jones just chewing a fuck out of that scenery as uh, the first cinematic Two-Face. Somebody uh, on Twitter this week was like, hey, in the last commentary track, you said this was the first time they did Two-Face, and, and but you're wrong, they did them in the cartoon. I was talking about cinematic, the the one up on the big screen uh, in terms of the live action. I'm sure somebody's like, there was a cinematic Two-Face on the big screen in the cartoon movie channel. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm sorry. I'm getting lost in the intro. But I, this is, to my knowledge, uh, the first time we see Two-Face represented in a live action uh, medium. And boy, were we all excited back in 95 when we heard that. Two-Face in a movie? Shit, man. They're fucking doing the comics justice. And then we saw this and saw that uh, their version of justice was the Injustice Gang, man. Everything up was down. Everything black was white. Um, bad buy. Me and Bizarro. So it was, uh, it was, it was a, a weird time to be a comic book fan. Uh, sync up your DVDs and or your streaming version of Batman Forever as we pick up the commentary track at the 52 minute, 10 second mark. Go to 5210. On your counter, and that's where the commentary track's gonna begin. Uh, big, 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 again, again. I gotta get the papers, get the papers. So, 5210 is your movie start. It's, uh, Two Face, uh, in his Two Face lair, uh, with, uh, his ladies, and they're about to light some cigarettes in his face and stuff, I believe. Uh, so there it is. Line up 5210, man. Let's dive back in to Batman Forever with uh, our good buddy Mark Bernard, man. Here we go. Um, Sugar and Spice, I believe, were their names. I don't, did they give them names? This is something out of fucking the Batman TV show because they're like I colorful only, side. I kids. only remember their names because in 1995 I was working for Starlog Magazine and we edited a Batman Forever licensed magazine. And I remember, I remember that I remember I bought that. <laughs> is that. Did you really work on that? Yeah. Cause I bought that. That yeah. was years before we fucking met. Oh God. How was, weird is that? It, man? That's th almost 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 I mean, but I bought that magazine cause I was hopeful. Cause who wasn't? Right. And I remember looking at all these pictures of like, Hey, that's Drew Barrymore in lingerie. I could get into this magazine. Oh me, man. The moment I saw she was on board, I was like, this motherfucker jumped the shark. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Barrymore, man. Not since E.T. have I enjoyed her ramblings. <laughs> I don't want to hear him in this fucking picture. But this right. is cool. He looks like the Riddler. And yeah. look, they fucking zoom in on him. He gives him a big hero shot. But oh, Lord, then fucking Tom. <laughs> this happens. Him. But uh, they, why they gave him the red hair? I mean, I guess he had to go with a hair color. Yeah. And he felt like make it colorful against the the green but like that's the part of the ensemble i don't really get into but he's good with this fucking cane oh like, yeah like, there are moments where he jim carrey is really brilliant in this like movie. jet lee must have taught him how to just swing his cane around and i like he's the first time like they put a domino mask on somebody and i like the black around his eyes mm -hmm. you know how they do it to batman and stuff like that it looks fucking badass and he's rubbery faced enough he he invokes gorshin mm -hmm. even though you know you're not supposed to but technically that's the only riddler that's ever gone yeah before you know that people would would kind of relate to or something like that so now how far into this movie are we? What are we, like 55 minutes? In? We are currently at the 54-minute mark. 53, 58, 53, 59. What do the bad guys want? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not pussy. Because <laughs> there's two women in lingerie right there, and all they're talking yeah. about is some dude. <laughs> some dude in a suit. We got to get him. We got to get him. And they're awfully fucking close with one another. There's a lot of flirtation, seduction going mm -hmm. on here. And the women are just sitting there haplessly, like women in a comic book store <laughs> who go out with dudes who read comics, not to be confused with the women who actually read comics Indeed. themselves. So I can also use hapless males accompanying <laughs> their comic reading girlfriends who are standing in the doorway. Like, they're just kind of like, yeah, what? I can't believe this sounded so fun when I took this <laughs> Um, we got to hang out in the lair. There would be outfits. That is good, man. Like, that fucking cane work. Why he had to take the hat off is beyond me. Because yeah. then all of a sudden we're into the... Right. And the did he bring those? Suit. Like, he didn't show up with a bag, and but suddenly Two Faces got his fucking magic uh, cereal shakers here. Look at you. Excellent fucking Paul. I didn't even notice that shit. And why is, and he's whistling, and she listens? Like, why do they fucking listen to him? No clue. 
None of this fucking makes sense. <laughs> Why? The moment the fucking hat comes off, he's no longer the Riddler, and now we're in Jim Carrey country. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like, he's ad-libbing like crazy. He's being over the top and stuff. And it's not really in keeping with the character. Although, to be fair, they haven't established much character yet. No. They, they've established a lot of wardrobe. Like, that's how you know who everybody is. They're wearing a funny suit. This is kind of like the... The exact same scene as when the penguin and the cat woman get together and mm -hmm. talk about like getting the Batman. Same fucking thing. Same like we could kill the bat and right. fucking uh Why do we want to kill the bat? Who gives a shit? We haven't tried to do anything, he stopped. And if you're doing this shit, if you can do this, what do you even need two face for? Yeah. Unclear. Like, Money? No. And then there is, does anybody feel like a fried egg? <laughs> We're in reference to the old this is your brain on drugs, man. Um I I don't I don't even know what to say about this whole fucking sequence other than it's just it's people talking and as we've established you don't want people talking in this movie but I ain't shitting in Joel Schumacher's mouth it's visually interesting they're not they're, pleasant no visually interesting no. he knows how to shoot um, his characters he knows how to frame a shot um, Jim Carrey is actually you know. Fucking working his ass off, like <laughs> nobody can, his money. Nobody could ever accuse this motherfucker of fanning. Fa what do they call phoning, phoning it in. in? Oh my god, he's so he's so into it. I don't know if he likes it or not, but boy, he's giving it a hundred percent. That's a that's a good performance. He man. went full Annie Lennox on this, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Sweet dreams are made of these. And then the montages begin. Look at look at the camera dutching like crazy. Okay, so now we're robbing shit for some reason we still don't know. I guess he needs money to build stuff. He said he wants him. Yeah, he needs money to make a bunch of boxes, and uh, he said we'll fuel it by stealing shit. Okay, here's how we understand that Dick Grayson is a badass because <laughs> he he karate's his laundry. This is like fucking. He's like Tom Cruise in Cocktail Dude. Oh Jesus! When he launders, he rains. <laughs> if the would this make you think that somebody could fucking fight? Not at all. Or it was any fucking skill whatsoever? It's just like you're going. You're expending an awful lot of energy. Yeah. To like, do some wash. Like normally looking, I just put it in. Are you looking for a blue man group? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, if I, I mean, we're, now we're into the fucking montage of like them stealing money fucking left and right. Look at this piece, man. This just felt like it was kind of made up on the set. <laughs> Teach me how to punch a guy. But look at how much money was spent just to do this mm -hmm. maybe 20 second piece of movie. All those extras. All that shit they had to build, and yep. then we're fucking out of it. Once again, another Dutch tilt. This is very close to transvestism. Uh, not that. It's not far. Tiara, <laughs> earrings, uh, which I'm fine with. We're in a very colorful mm. world. Why Professor not? Batman. What do you have to say for yourself, Professor Batman? This is what I can't stand, too, about fucking a move like this where they're just like, I want to put a box on every fucking TV and in every home in America. <laughs> And watch, he's going to do it over the course of like <laughs> two days yeah, of a montage. And yet no time passes in Gotham mm -hmm. whatsoever. We've been ignoring these clues that he's been sending. Because they're the worst fucking clues ever. It really feels like they just pulled a riddle. Back <laughs> and look at him. This is them showing Batman being a detective. Right. Glasses. And turtle thinking. Yeah, and turtleneck. <laughs> oh, clearly a sign that he's doing his detective work. But still, they kept him in that turtleneck thing. They which did. was established by Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Tim Burton and stuff. There's uh, that. There's sweater that. Vest. I mean, I know this doesn't go anymore, but like, is that earring on the side? Which side is that? I mean, it's it's. I I mean, like, they remember when we were kids? Though, like, if you wear an earring in this side, you're right. cool. If you wear it on the other side, it means yeah. you want to eat dick. Yeah. Um. Is he have it in the right in the correct? I think he has it in the in the cool side. Is that? I think so. So that's what makes cool him a side. hard ass. Yes. <laughs> He's got a darling bangle in his ear. <laughs> I'm a pirate. I'm tough like a pirate. <laughs> Arg. I'm Robin. Um, why is Nigma Tech set up at what looks like a plumbing <laughs> you know, concern? See, here it is, dude. Mm. Everyone must have a Nigma Tech. We've sold at least 30, <laughs> according to all these pictures, and one even to a dog. All this shit is happening in over the course of, like, it's in order to sell that many boxes. Yeah. It's got to be happening over the course of a long ass fucking time. I mean, you know, 
it 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 would take like two years to bring something like that to market. <laughs> Like between research and development, manufacturing and hiring people and <laughs> facilities and shipping and all of that shit. They built the island too. This yeah. fucking island that's collecting all the brain waves in a matter of two right. days. They, because we know this because Robin was doing some laundry. <laughs> and then late and look on like, where's he going in that closet? And he still yeah. tries to go in the closet later on. And he hasn't made it in there. Yeah. So it's. I don't understand. This literally may be the course of 24 hours, this montage. Yeah. In order for everything else to make sense in this movie. Now, I'm sure somebody would argue like, hey, man, you don't need to make sense. It's a comic book movie. Bullshit. Fuck you. I mean, you need some logic. This is my least favorite scene in the entire fucking movie. Robin sneaking into the back. The, the Odessa step sequence of Robin sneaking into the back. <laughs> Explain. In the like... Through editing, we will make a thing that would take a second last four fucking minutes. Right. Look at him. Swoop, swoop. Yeah. Oh, oh, I can oh. do it. I can make it. What? Down. No. Door's oh, still closing. Door's I'm going to use all my skills as a trapeze artist to get into this door. Also, Alfred, the worst fucking security guard. No. Like, he's. this is a guy who brought Vicky, Vicky Vale down into the fucking back cave. He'd be dead, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Like, never mind. Like, never mind. I've discovered this is the back cave. <laughs> Alfred would be telling Bruce a different story where he's like, that boy broke his neck. <laughs> that boy jumped off like the fourth story and broke his yeah. fucking neck. And, and in the back cave, what are we going to do? Uh, Let's bury him. Where we put the others. <laughs> put him in the vat of acid. And the back cave has like a motion detector that starts everything. Yeah. It's yelling intruder alert, but it's like, here's the car. Yeah. Here's the car. I'm going to turn everything on. Here's the shit you can use. Yeah. Want to steal this? Alfred's giving him that fucking look and, and fucking Robin's wave gives that wave back like, I know, I'm going to have to suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm all for it. It's all good. Let's do it in the hot car. Look at her fucking apartment, dude. Who? Yeah. She lives in a museum where people come to see <laughs> Um she Who's the head of a giant? <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, as soon as we head into... Chase Meridian Land. Yeah. Everything slows to a fucking crawl, and we start talking about Batman's dreams and how he can't be two people, and he, he hasn't told her that he's Batman yet. Mm. This is one of the other storylines: is Bruce Wayne likes Chase Meridian, yes. but <laughs> Chase Meridian likes Batman, mm. and Bruce Wayne, as Batman, doesn't want to give it up as Batman. He'd rather she like him for him. It's kind of stolen straight out of another superhero fucking franchise. Indeed. Um, and they that's that's what they bring to this movie. That's what they've asked Nicole Kidman to do. And she's very gamely attempting it. She's trying. But fuck, dude. Like, this ain't Batman. Because Batman doesn't want to not be Batman. Yeah, never. <laughs> never. Even in his happiest fucking moments and shit. He's just like, you know what would make me even happier than being married to you? Stopping this from ever happening to a little boy again. She's like, I know. Would you stop talking about little boys? And <laughs> What's your problem? Parent? Yeah, God damn it. Always a really fucking nice publicity shot of Batman in the papers, right? <laughs> and on the covers of magazines. Because well, he sits for it. He poses know. for fucking pictures and shit. Batman's cool. You can walk up to him and be like, can I take a picture with you, Batman? Selfie style? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Just fucking put down no middle fingers. <laughs> Everyone say justice. <laughs> <laughs> no gang signs. No, I throw him up. <laughs> John Favreau's on second. I'm going to take that. You watch. I'm going to put that in Iron Man years from now. <laughs> I can't believe this fucking scene is still happening. Uh, it yeah. just won't stop happening. It's what we're at now. There's only 58 minutes left to all of the third major Batman film that Warner Brothers put out. Yes. And this is how we're wasting it. The like, middle of the second act. Who the dude just wants to get laid? Fuck about these two, man. Like, I don't care. And he's got too many moles on his face to be Batman. <laughs> because if that mask slips, they're like, hey, you got a mole like Bruce Wayne. Hey, you are Bruce Wayne. <laughs> also, he's got the most recognizable lips in the world. Val Kilmer? Yeah. He does. Now that you mention it. He's I mean, they're beautiful. Fucking, yeah, he's got they're some, stunning. You got a pretty mouth. Mm. They are fucking pretty. Yeah, you could ID Batman by yeah, the just, lips alone. Who else looks like this? He'd have to wear rubber lips to hide them, and that's something that happens <laughs> in the fourth movie. Um, I feel like they did steal our brainwaves in this part of the movie because I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, uh, and I'm still staring at the TV. I can't not watch and shit. Now, who does this, dude? Like, fucking, you start talking into your Dick Tracy watch circa 1995, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the fucking, you know, PhD doctor doesn't put together 
Right. That you've got tech that maybe somebody else also who has, but oh, I don't know, Batman. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just have a fucking cell phone? Like if you have that, just have a phone. Oh. And At meanwhile, this point, this drug guy, dealers had cell phones. And he is the worst to have on the other end of your fucking watch phone because he's like <laughs> the other car <laughs> um this is uh dick grayson takes the batmobile out into gotham's neon city yeah <laughs> kids you never want to go out in neon city nah. man look at how all the toughs are dressed like the fucking wanderer the warriors <laughs> and shit warriors <laughs> come on play yay. um i remember they said that chris o'donnell took the car and actually did wreck one of the Batmobiles. Did he? Yeah, yeah. He nice. drove it into like some scenery or some such shit. <laughs> and it was like $60,000 damage. Like it was a big deal and shit. Uh, they had three cars, but still they were like, hey, dickhead, <laughs> get away from the expensive shit. Oh, black people. I think that are whores. There you go. So you could be a executive assistant, mm -hmm. mayor, mm -hmm. or a hooker. Or a hooker. There's a lot of jobs for There people. totally are. A lot of jobs. A dozen people. black people are well employed. <laughs> <laughs> This I don't understand, man. He was in a car. All the toughs start. Now they're in Dayglo world. Right. They start chasing one other person, and he's just like, I'll fucking save you. Why did he drive the car? No idea. Um, I don't know that this would scare me. This would be, make me happy. No. If I walked into this room, I'd want to get my fucking glow stick on. Is it going to be cake? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing threatening about this, man. It's more like I wouldn't be scared. I'd be like, what are you guys? Are you guys an interpretive dance troupe? <laughs> what are you going to do? Look at the sticks, dude. <sighs> they got their glow sticks. This is a rave. It's only a rave. <laughs> oh, my God. I need water. He's flipping. <laughs> and he flips right into their grip. Yeah. And then he's just like, put your face in my dick. <laughs> he's awesome at this. Um, this is how we all know he should be a crime fighter, right? Yeah. This guy does, does he not take him on? He's like, oh, he save does. the best for last. And that was it. One, two. Wow. He put down Cowboy Curtis. I know. Don the Dragon Wilson couldn't handle it. Now look at this, man. This is clearly, this is Alicia. Do -do. She almost looks like Alicia Silverstone. This could be a scene for Batman and Robin. That scene is put in just to remind people that they might like girls <laughs> because the whole movie, man. Now watch this shit. They're all peering out of nowhere. All the day glow. He's going to get his oh, ass man. kicked. That little girl that they were so interested in chasing. Gone. She just went off. She, they could go grab her again. Yeah. No. He didn't really fucking save her. No. And the time they took the fucking kiss, he probably damned her life <laughs> in neon alley. But don't worry, man. It's there's okay. the bat. Batman's going to fight the disco Morlocks. You watch the disco Morlocks. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, even in like uh, the other uh, fucking Batman, the Chris Nolan movies, that cape really fucking that can save him from what would be certain death dropping off a rooftop. Now it watch this be. shit. I hate you. I don't love you. I don't love you. I don't totally love you. I wish I didn't. You don't even have to be Batman to defend against this <laughs> pussy. Look at how he's hitting him. He's like, I'm going to hit your shoulder and your other shoulder. He's not even blocking hits. No. Batman's just standing there with a gauntlet up. And why is he beating up Batman? Because he didn't save his parents, and I'm angry for no good reason. I have to do punchy things. <laughs> <laughs> you make me suck on those dicks. I don't want to suck any more dicks. Bruce, uh, he's fucking beating up on Bruce, and Bruce is like, I can see he's using the H and R to wash food. <laughs> 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 Clearly, this is a man who can fucking clean his clothes wash with the on. rage of a caped crusader, <laughs> crouching, tied, hidden <laughs> Clorox. <laughs> Here comes my spin cycle kick. <laughs> um, why this motherfucker thinks he can just suddenly walk in and be like, you need me. I'm your partner. Makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Man. Why Bruce Wayne doesn't trank this fucking kid and just give him some kind of amnesia drug and send him away. <laughs> just go. You figured too much shit out. I'm not going to hang around in my sweats after showering and talk about stuff with you. He's like, yeah, I'm just in my hang clothes. <laughs> you know, just keeping it a kid. What is this, 1995? He's like, you want to listen to some boys to men? <laughs> <laughs> I got some Cavaricis your size right back here. And okay. I'll take <laughs> with me the memory. Back me up, dick. <laughs> <laughs> too slow, a little in vogue. Oh, my God, dude. Why are – I can't believe this should be as cool as, like, 
Anakin Skywalker meet Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> Batman and Robin are fucking talking to each other in the Batcave, and he's yes. not Robin yet, but he's close. He's pretty much there. John's but, fucking bat symbol in the background. He spent a lot of money on that. Yeah, man. he kind of did. And I don't know that it does anything. Nope. It's really just a chrome decoration. Pretty much. Once again, leads to the ultimate question. I understand he's got billions of dollars to do what he wants, but does he build all this shit? <laughs> just him and Alfred? Come on, old man. Hand yeah. me that fucking pliers. He's like, I'm too old to help. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to watch. <laughs> Alfred, can you do me a favor? Dig out another cave. Alfred, what were you doing back there? He's like, jerking off, sir. I love to watch boys argue in the dark. <laughs> Uh, this I is was a real location. I was the well. bishop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, sliding down the bat pole, <laughs> sir. And I brought our boy toy with us for this evening. Chief Look at that. The Batman. Look how open that shirt is, man. Oh, with the puka chills, like network necklace working. He walks out there. Look at this shit. What the fuck? <laughs> this band does not exist. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's Prince and the Revolution. <laughs> Without the Prince. <laughs> Without Prince, it's just the Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? Well, <laughs> they're like, well, remember he had that puppet <laughs> and he was telling us that he didn't like our music. So we all left. <laughs> And we got a job in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Gossip go. Birdie's back, giving a bigger performance than Tommy Lee Jones, if that's fucking possible. Yeah. Um, I thought this is a cute little bit, though, where fucking he's dressed exactly like <laughs> Bruce Wayne. He has his hair done like him and shit. He puts the fucking glass on. He's got a mole. He even calls Ooh. attention to it. He's like, how's my mole? Um, did, did Drew Barrymore have a line in this movie? Does she have any dialogue? I mean, the mm. less the better. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Unless she's saying alligators in the sewer, I don't want to fucking hear it. Um, the uh, There was another superhero reference, dude. After the girl kissed Dick, mm. which sounds hotter yeah. than I, I meant it. Um, Dick says, I could definitely get into this superhero gig. Second reference yes. of superheroes. Something that had never happened in mm. a Tim Burton Batman movie. And probably with good reason. Um and in that sequence, I would say that well, we kept going for like, oh, it's fucking Dago. It looks like Dick was getting ready to fight the entire fucking cast of Starlight Express. <laughs> <Didn't it? laughs> I mean, here's ironically, I think Jim Carrey might have made in an alternate universe a great Batman. Explain. I think that you would buy Bruce Wayne, his Bruce Wayne, as a completely different person than Batman. I, yeah, I agree. Like the sort of that. the rubbery goofball who inherits a billionaire fortune and has no idea what to do with it, mm. and then can do the fucking grim Dark Knight bullshit on the, at night. Like you'd never like, think those what was two that movie he did the number thirteen or something like that. Yeah, you know, so that would like, be his Batman or like driven. you know Eternal Sun, like uh, the sun, the Eternal Sunshine yeah, yeah, Spotless yeah, Mind. Like really he could do that. drama. Like he could get you there, and you would never think that those two were the same guy in a million years. Like I could almost buy that in a weird way. The uh, fucking weird thing, too, is like before when they're in the cave, Dick is sitting there going like, um, when I was out there tonight, it was him I was imagining fighting. Even when I was fighting you, he never fought Batman. No. He slapped his biceps a few times. <laughs> that's no fucking fight. That ain't even slap foo. That ain't even, that's nowhere near wash foo. <laughs> You're just uh, like a kitten with a ball. Um, it's always disturbing when Batman puts on those glasses to see something that's like 10 feet away from him. <laughs> he had to like put on glasses to look up at that fucking screen. Um, and how fucking uh, Chase Meridian winds up stealing. Oh, that's actually kind of funny. His fast fucking dance. <laughs> yeah. Movie. How Chase Meridian winds up stealing so much screen time. Why not call her Chase Meridian? Why not make her Silver St. Cloud? Why not just use a Batman <laughs> a universe thing. name? Yeah, just anybody. Fucking. And, and why does Drew Barrymore trick fucking the likes of Bruce Wayne, one of the smartest detectives on the planet, into fucking doing this? Because she's like, yeah. this has to go in here. And he's like, well, then this better not go in there. And he takes it with him. And instead, she just puts another fucking little tube of cum in Bruce there. Wayne knows what this thing does. And still gets in it. Only because he's like, well, I got this vial of liquid. Wait, what? I have triumphed over Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have beat a Charlie's Angel. But look, she's got a spare. Oh, shit. Nobody knew she had a spare. How could there possibly be more than one thing to make this machine work? It's the secret of the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to turn him into Shredder and shit like that. Um Batman so easily tricked by Drew Mer Barrymore. Yes. That's not my Batman. No, that's nobody's Batman. No, I, I would have to say. Fuck <sighs> it. 
It's fast becoming a movie about two rich dudes who swap wives for. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like he wound up with Drew Barrymore. Mm-hmm. He's over there dancing with fucking Nicole Kidman and shit. It's like a sequel to Indecent Proposal. <laughs> Sade is gonna kick in any minute. This she is, is no ordinary love. No ordinary love. <laughs> Oh, here she is, Sade herself. <laughs> uh, Tommy Lee Jones just cannot be denied in this movie. No. He won't stop coming into scenes. We have a plan, right? Yeah, we got a plan. Don't fuck it up, will you? I won't fuck it up. I fucked it up. And he literally comes in to be like, we had a plan. What happened to our plan? Um, it, it's it's You wish that somebody had given him a few more days off. <laughs> because i mean as bad as this scene was and this set to me always looked a little cheap oh yeah it really that one right there just the machine that he went yeah. into it looked like a set from the fucking batman 60s tv show <laughs> we we got a drape and we got some plastic and a door i mean for everybody that's just like when will they do harley quinn in the movies there's two girl sidekicks mm-hmm. they just didn't give many fucking lines to anything interesting to say so Okay, so Bat- Bruce Wayne leaves, slides down this fucking thing, gets mm. in his car, changes, climbs all the fucking back up <laughs> the building to come to back into the, the skylight. skylight. Well, his- presumably he uses his grappling hook, but you're absolutely right. His you're only already- entrance is from the top. And he goes through a fucking window, like probably hurting himself eh. before he then goes into a fucking fight. Right. And then at the end of this, like he jumps out and still plummets somewhere else. Yes, yeah, he just into keeps the going sock. down. He's just jumping around all the fucking time, man. But at least, man, you get to see this fucking shit. Yeah, but I remember that's the trailer. That's the yes. trailer shot. And you see that in a movie, and you're like, holy fucking Christ, man. Batman coming through the skylight, landing in the fountain, then watch he'll flip out, and he'll start beating the fuck out of all these neon gun toters, mm-hmm. man. Batman don't like neon on guns. <laughs> this is impractical. Batman don't like that. Stop doing it. You got one of them guns? Boom. <laughs> um, not, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, these are great fight scenes, but honestly, this is what I'll say. I could accomplish these fights. <laughs> I you know, could do that. I think I could make a superhero movie if if this is what it, if this is the <laughs> fight scene you could kind of do. And what's this all about? Once again, this too looks like they ran out of money in this one shot. They're like, just park it up yeah. to a backdrop and we'll have it run out. <laughs> this is all the end of the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we we spent a lot of fucking We're money. done and we're out of money. Once again, the fucking stupid. They use the stupid Raiders of the Lost Ark joke twice. Two times. And that joke is a bite back on the Batman joke mm. where the fucking guy does the swordsman does all that shit and Batman kicks him. And then he stops. No Batman stops. For t- oh. People are getting killed by motherfuckers with neon guns and shit. Mm. And he's stopping to be like, do you like me? Or do you <laughs> like me like me? <laughs> Circle one. <laughs> but this is cool. He does take out a few people on the way. Two-Face could have shot him right there. Yes, didn't want to. Ops not to. Instead, lets Batman scurry up, up the wall and shit. Right. And now she knows that he, Batman is Bruce Wayne because of his lips. Much like Mary Jane knows that Spider-Man is Spider-Man because of his lips. Can you imagine they stole from this movie? <laughs> yeah, of all the movies. Of all the from. fucking movies you could see. See, there are moments like that where he pops up over the rooftop mm-hmm. and I'm like, he looks fucking good, man. He looks cool. Why can't this movie be super cool? Ugh. Watch this. So Batman does something. This is a pretty cool shot. And this is the mm-hmm. beginning of the digital effects era. So you can see they're like so happy with it. Mm-hmm. And it's total trailer moment. Mm-hmm. But Eve, thank God this fucking giant sock was there. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have died. Two-Face yes. saved Batman's life. And if you really want to kill Batman, just don't put the sock yeah, there. It's, it's all good. <laughs> He's going to jump and then fall and die. Right? Instead, That's what they're like, let's fill this with gas. And fucking burn him to death. And fire. Which is actually kind of badass, man. Like the idea of the like, they're gonna shoot. what have we not done in a Batman movie? Let's shoot a bunch of fire at this <laughs> motherfucker. And then he has to cape up. Yeah. And then Zoom. touch something here. And then suddenly fucking some weird shit. Shiny that, super fireproof cape. You know, and, once they, and once again, they're attributing something to Batman. That, mm. And I know that's a tiny thing. But it allows you to look at this guy. They're all like, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, but that allows you to do this shot here where fucking Batman comes running. But look at the cow wiggle. Mm. You can't do slow-mo with this outfit because of the cow wiggle. But that's kind of badass right there, man. I mean, but you could have done that without the magic cape. Just fucking he runs out. The, the suit is insulated. Right. Fire, fire. Jumps out of the fire. Whatever. Why not? That'd be kind of cool if he'd come out without the cape. The cape looked kind of cool. But imagine the cape would have taken some flames with it. Look, why fucking go? He could have shot him upstairs. <laughs> you didn't have to go through all this. And, and he's like, why won't you just die? And then never sticks around 
to make sure he is right. dead. Or just you don't even have to stick around and make sure he's dead. Just run over where he was Shoot and empty him. a fucking couple clips of your neon guns right into the fucking ground. You had a dozen. Who are you different- running from? <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. It's like the only one you're scared of is Batman. So just hang out. Yeah, and don't worry. He's going to run away from you the minute he gets to his car. <laughs> <laughs> he's more scared of you. <laughs> That's uh, just the way it works. This could have been amazing, dude. If this was a nine-year-old boy, I know mm. I sound creepy like a petter ass <laughs> when I say this, but Robin should be a little boy right here. Mm. This would be so amazing if an adult looked up. Like, look at that weird, mm. creepy tongue sticking out. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to help you. Come up here now. Whose turn is it to suck dick? Get up here, Bruce. It could have been so cool if it was a nine-year-old kid and he's getting yeah. saved by a little boy. Here's the Nightwing reference. Mm. Bat Boy, Nightwing, he would never suggest to call himself Bat Boy. No. He wouldn't put Boy anywhere in there because he couldn't because he's like a grandfather in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's so old. Um, I do like the fucking, uh, the, uh, you know, Alfred working on Batman. That's right. always fucking cool. And Kilmer's like bringing a little heat in this. Like, not a lot, but a little heat. Oh, that big bat thing opens up and there's a. Uh, a little screen behind it. Oh, nice. Like a clock. Yeah, so they yeah. know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then they close it. So people are like, so the place is great. It's got everything but a TV. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Um, I don't think Doc Kilmer has a Batman voice. He he d- does I mean, this. Um, uh, bats aren't rodents, doctor. <laughs> like he just drops it a yeah. little, but he's not like, arr, 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 arr. <laughs> but then again, Michael Keaton didn't go didn't really oh, oh, oh. he dropped it a little bit yeah they just like i'm a little bit deeper and not the you look, know look at these glamour shots of a fucking chase meridian in a goddamn revlon commercial i don't know what this footage is from <laughs> no, but alfred alfred step yeah. out this is my stroke reel <laughs> i start this screen over here then i start this one a few seconds later <laughs> then i start this one a little later i put them all on loop and i jerk the fuck off on a never ending fucking shot of chase meridian i'm chasing her meridian <laughs> bullet time baby that's actually a pretty sexy shot right there ba, 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 ba. there yeah a little bit kiss. <laughs> that's where you'd imagine they would use yeah. kiss from a rose but they did not um once again Cute. periodically they're like uh yeah we swear all these people are hetero you know, they throw yeah. in some kind of sexy illusion, man, woman, or something like that. But I don't know. This movie feels awfully arch. It is uh, a little bit precious. Um, this could have been an amazing scene if she opened up the fucking doors and just dropped that sheet, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> why not? Man, I know this is a kid's movie, but just fucking show us flat out like a like here. You know how this scene is better? Mm. She comes to the door. She drops the sheet. He looks down. Her bush is shaved in a bat symbol. <laughs> I did this for you. <laughs> and she's like, enter the bat cave. And he's like, fuck yeah. And he, they get it on and he keeps on the cowl and the cape, but everything else is fucking off. And she's completely fucking naked. And then he rips the cape off. So it's mm. just, he's naked, but just cow. Just cow. <laughs> it's what a man does. She's that like, matters. I know it's your lips, Bruce. This is like, Bruce who? What? Bruce, Bruce who? I want to put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wayne. I'm telling you, that would make, that would improve this scene drastically. Because all the shit they're saying in this scene is essentially her going, I thought I wanted to fuck Batman, like I've been saying since the first reel, but really now I want to fuck somebody else. And it leads to something in this movie which should never happen in a Batman movie, ever. I don't, I don't I know. Batman should never, never do what he's about to do, man. And you know what he's about to do? Here it comes. Yeah. Hold on. Here it is, Here it is folks. Oh. Uh. That smile, dude. That he looks like autopilot from Airplane, <laughs> the movie when he was getting blown. Um, there's that glory shot of Batman in the paper. They always have these eight by tens that they could put all over the place, so that everyone in Gotham could stare at those lips and be like, "Looks an awful yeah. lot like Bruce Wayne." Hmm. Look at that! Look like Two Face was trying to fucking eat Riddler's dick. I'm he telling is. you, dude. I don't think I'm the only one reading into this. <laughs> I know I like to erotically charge everything, uh, but but boy, oh boy, it's at a very remedial reading level. Like pretty much anybody can see this. And this is uh, they're reading Bruce Wayne's brain scan, right? And of course, what they find deep in his cortex is a bat. <laughs> Mind you, this is a town that's obsessed with Batman. Yeah. 
Like everybody, everybody, is everybody probably want, like has what it, a bat swimming yeah, around. Like in it's their fucking head. Gotham City. Everybody, oh, Batman, 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 Batman. He's on the front cover of the fucking newspaper. Batman, Batman, Batman. You say that's, that's, that's actually a really cool moment in this movie. Right? <laughs> Batman, Batman. You say. Look at this, dude. The smile is Batman's kryptonite because he mm. smiles and immediately he's like, I don't want to be Batman no more. <laughs> And he starts shutting it down. Apparently, to stop being Batman, you just got to turn off some lights. Yeah. Just don't intrude. Do you know what the secret of Batman is? You leave the lights on. <laughs> when you want to stop being Batman, you turn the lights off. <laughs> it's that simple. Bet on. <laughs> <laughs> Such a better scene if he just walked to one place and was just like. <laughs> oh, fucking time. We're done with Batman. <laughs> Why not? And then meanwhile, this kid's like. Hey, man, we can't stop. I'm like, what's this we shit? <laughs> like, I barely know you, dude. You're the fucking gay hustler that court ordered us to take <laughs> home. Who, me and the old man and plugging in the mouth. But that's done. I got a girlfriend now. <laughs> I figured out a way to get it up for a girl. I quit. <laughs> I'm faking it with Dr. Chase Meridian, okay? I'm going to give this a go. This entire movie is about Batman as a symbol for impotence. Uh, to be fair, though, once again... Joel Schumacher did Batman walking away from being Batman <laughs> before Chris Nolan did. Indeed. And in fact, he only lets him do it here for about five minutes. <laughs> Whereas in the fucking Chris Nolan movies, Batman quits for what? Eight years. Eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this movie's so fucking dated. She would never take a cab. She would take an Uber car at this point. <laughs> and once again, man, it don't you can pull right up to the front door of fucking Wayne Manor. There's it's no okay. security on this bitch whatsoever. Alfred made one sad pumpkin. You see that? Just one little jack-o'-lantern at the door. Yeah, he's just like, this is how I express my creativity. <laughs> I live my life in service to a billionaire, but <laughs> every year I make my own jack-o'-lantern. I put a tear on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it represents me, Master Bruce. <laughs> this is my cry for help. Why is this fucking suit <laughs> placed next? His fucking trapeze suit. Place next to the bat. Alfred suit. is the worst butler ever. <laughs> and what is he fucking like? But Alfred has no sense. It's like those two things don't go together. Mm -mm. Like, look at Batman's outfit. Dark blends into the darkness. I am a creature of the night. Everything about that other outfit screams fucking shoot me, shoot me. Which maybe that's what Alfred's <laughs> thinking. Maybe if he shoot him, he's like, I'll put a target next to Master Bruce. That'll Master save his life. Dick. Yeah, he's like he can he could shoot this forty five year old fucking guy. <laughs> Once again, Gotha Wayne Man are so unprotected that kids roll up right up to the fucking door, man. They could come with an IED, and the moment he opens that door, they could whip some sort of improvised explosive device inside, ruin everybody's good evening. But how far do these fucking kids have to ride their bikes to get to Wayne Manor? Like, they're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And like, there's three kids without parents so just like, yeah, He up. gives out whole Hershey bars. <laughs> it's going to be worth the fucking trip, dude. Oh, man, you don't know. But there's the, the rule, the universe is so inconsistent in this world because the little kids could go right up to the front door – the villains are fucking stymied <laughs> by a closed gate, so much so that they have to lurk in the shadows, and that's no way to sneak around people. No, -uh. uh, that's Too almost garish. bound to call more attention to yourselves. But yeah, like they made it through the gate, and as far as we could tell, Alfred was surprised to see them at the door. Yeah, like, oh, what are you oh, doing? Children here? made it through our security. And meanwhile, that's Two Face and Riddler, Riddler, arguably the smartest man in Gotham now, after stealing everybody's fucking brainwaves mm. and shit. Can't figure out how to get in until the fucking kids leave. Yeah. How do, do we have to kill the children? Man, we should kill the children. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> if they were just like, like the Riddler was like, let's go inside. And all of a sudden you're, Pff, ah! <laughs> you turn around and two faces shooting the children one but, by one. He's like, stop it. This movie takes a wicked <laughs> turn. But they do have the mask. They have the kids masks when they go up to the door. Oh, yeah. And they ring the bell. Oh, so maybe they did. Hurt maybe they the totally kids. killed the children. The children. I'm going to choose to believe they did. That makes this, that improves this movie a little bit. Man. I know a lot of people are like, you guys are fucking sick, but it's a movie. Yeah, Fuck off. On. But that would make it a cooler movie. That would make them villains. I'll tell you, it'd be better than this shit right here where he's flashing back. I don't want to see this shit. Crying in his fireplace. Like, I get this is a big part of the mythos, but that's what I love about the comic books because you're inside his head and he's talking to you. He gives you an internal monologue. It's not all this impressionistic flashbacky shit and whatnot. And once again, it's just like, we were on a roll. Things were <laughs> moving along, and now suddenly we're back inside Bruce's head. I don't know. And, and uh, yeah, 
And you know, like I get that it's a it's a massive trauma if your parents die when you're eight. Yeah, of course. You're 32 at this point now, Bruce. You've had some time to live with this and wrestle with it and, and internalize it. And you can't sit there and fucking fall to pieces every time somebody drops a rose on the floor. <laughs> she didn't mean it, all right? She didn't know that it was going to bring up your fucking parents. Are you wearing stuff. pearls? Not my parents. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Oh, Bruce, shoot it all over me. I want a pearl necklace." He's like, "You reminded me of my mom. <laughs> never say pearl <laughs> and never drop roses." There. Once oh, again, man. fucking Joel Schumacher beats Chris Nolan to young Bruce Wayne falling yep. into the Batcave. Like, you know, that that was from Batman Begins, but before Batman Begins, technically, no. technically, you did it in Batman fucking forever, man. Why do we fall, Master Bruce? So we can get <laughs> back up again. So we can waste five fucking minutes <laughs> in Batman Forever. And I will point out, there are now 31 minutes left to this movie. Yep. So much more to do. So many other things we could be looking at instead of this, mm -hmm. man. Although, to be fair, that giant bat coming at him in the darkness, that's right out of Dark Knight Returns, dude. Yep, totally. So even before fucking other people, even before Christopher Nolan started taking little bites of Dark Knight Returns, mm -hmm. Joel Schumacher was doing it. I'm not saying Joel Schumacher's the better man, the better director. No. I'm just saying he was there first. Yes. First through the fucking door, and you got to give him props for it. Whenever people say... Joel Schumacher, Batman, like, oh, nipples on the bat suit. He ruined everything and stuff. But mm -hmm. not all. It wasn't, uh, you know, fucking, they, they were trying. But they, it falls apart. I trying can't. and not succeeding. Okay, so with about 30 minutes left, 1995, I'm, I'm starting to get that sinking feeling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there have been plenty of, you know, hallmarks along the way. To let me know that this ain't going to work out for a Batman fan right. as much as one would like. There are moments of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, someone mentions Metropolis. Um, fucking, you know, uh, Batman says, you need help, Harvey. <laughs> Shit like that. But overall, man, you start going, I don't know. Yeah. There's like a half hour left. And I, I think they're going to drop the ball. The, the downward slant into not being good has gotten more than gradual. That was clearly not Michael Go as Alfred. I do like him coming through the door though and going, trick. <laughs> Very funny. Um, Alfred can't tell the difference between a child in a mask and an no. adult in a mask. Alfred is the worst butler. <laughs> he really is. Like maybe Alfred needs another dude just you have, to help out. You have nobody in your life helping you except Alfred. You choose the old man <laughs> who can't tell the difference. And what is this fucking remote control device opening doors and shit? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he got to be something like Steve Jobs of crime. But then again, like inventing shit. to be fair, um, in Batman Returns, they had the fucking blueprints for the goddamn Batmobile. <laughs> uh, this is a scary notion, though. Fucking the villains knowing that Bruce Wayne is Batman and coming to the Wayne Manor. They haven't done this yet in the movies. No. I mean, this this could be an amazing scene. Yeah. Like it could be like, you know, your sanctum sanctorum has been violated mm -hmm. and your secret identity has been exposed and everything you've held precious and dear has been blown up. As shocking and, and fucking gut punchy in the comics as Bane figuring out yeah. that Batman is Bruce Wayne and fucking he comes to get him in the end of Nightfall and shit. Yeah. Like this could have been a harrowing home invasion. Instead, and it's like for laughs instead and it also instead it feels once again like somebody being like oh man let's let him do shit without the costume mm -hmm. so people could see that even bruce wayne is a hero and we can see val kilmer because we're paying him all this fucking money <laughs> we're hiding him in a goddamn mask look at that face i like these little bombs though man i think they're kind of adorable and i think he's actually like really fun in this sequence yeah. the way he moves and whatnot although the slow motion doesn't help anything no um, and once again, there are moments where it's like he's just kind of slipping into Jim Carrey world. But watching him blow up the armory and watching him fucking blow up all his suits and shit like that. Yeah. Again, Favreau got there later. That's true. This, this That's is true. The, all the suits blowing up in Iron Man 3. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Favreau wasn't on that one, remember? That oh, was true. Fucking, true. His face? That was looking Black. blessed, dude. Now, even in the score, they're reflecting the joke like that. This would never happen in a Danny Elfman score. Mm. This score was Elliot Goldenthal did this score. It's mm. not bad. The Batman March in it is pretty good. Dun, 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 dun. But it's not as good as. Na, 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 na. And that little moment where he did the baseball, like boom, mm. boom, boom. 
yeah, it's cute. I get it. But what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This is a Batman movie. And Batman is being like a fucking accosted, attacked upstairs. Yeah, this should be his personal apocalypse. Like this should be the, the nadir of the film. Mm. Like Batman at his lowest point. And instead it's just this like farce. Could you imagine if you gave Chris Nolan this script <laughs> and see what he did with it? Just turned it dark. Same movie, but dark. Yeah. After um, you stopped crying. Two Face has <laughs> has been sitting there trying to get the good coin toss, and I got to be honest with you, it's my favorite Tommy Lee Jones performance in the movie because he's not saying anything. Yeah, he's just sitting there flipping the fucking coin and Pissed stuff at his coin, and not being like, "Oh, lucky die, lucky die, lucky die," way over the top. Why do they fucking want Chase Meridian, no especially problem. if he's about to shoot fucking Bruce Wayne through the head? Only to be stopped by the Riddler, you know, who says if uh, if you kill him, you won't learn nothing. <laughs> why? Why fucking? Why do they need the girl? Why do they? Why? None of this there, makes sense. There's no why. Why are we even thinking? There's just know. no why, man. It's kind of though uh, them attacking him like uh, on Halloween with the mask. It's kind of like the cinematic version of Batman: The Long Halloween, isn't it? <laughs> because this scene is so fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> it just never fucking ends. Finally, we're getting out of here and shit. This is frightening, dude. I'm going to admit something to you right now. Uh -oh. This transition right here where we push in on him and he's upside down and we push in on his eyes and then we kind of pull back and he's the other side up and we push it, pull out from his eyes. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm sitting here going, this movie, this, this movie, that, I fucking, when I watched this movie the other night, I was like, oh my God, I have a very similar moment <laughs> in Tusk. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that embarrassing to admit? Not like I stole a moment from Tim Burton's Batman. It's like I stole a moment from Joe Schumacher's Batman. <laughs> Hopefully, people will forget by the time they see it. But I mean, to be fair, Schumacher stole it from Hitchcock. Like it's it's totally point. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the psycho pushing in on the eye and pulling back out on the drain. All like right, fair enough. It's not fucking for you're, a minute. You're there. safe. I was like, I'm gonna have to cut that shit out. <laughs> uh, there was a little nice moment when he fucking woke up, and uh, I, that I think is honestly Val Kilmer's finest moment in the whole movie mm. is when he wakes up and he says something to him about like uh, being a little kid. And, and he's just like, you haven't called me that in a while or something like that. Mm. It, was, it was actually kind of sweet, man. Yeah. Like there's, there's a version of this movie. There's a version of every movie mm. that feels better than this version. You know, that feels like you can add there all it is. the Batman. <laughs> Batman, you say? I do like his couch, too. Like, if somebody was like, we're going to throw this Riddler couch out, would you want it? I'd be like, oh, my God, totally. <laughs> You're done. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it, but, like, that would be an awesome couch to have. What the fuck is this? I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like, what's going on? And, and also, it's it, like, just follow the source of the laser beams, and you may find out <laughs> where the bad guy is. Yeah, maybe a little... Dear Commissioner Gordon, you were the worst fucking police officer. You're worse than a butler. You're a worse <laughs> police commissioner than Alfred is a butler. And that's God. fucking saying a lot. This is a city that can use some Logan's run, man. You old people are useless. And what are they trying to figure out here? Like, what is the fucking, again, you don't need to figure out these clues. <laughs> like, up look in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the lasers back to the dopey <laughs> island. He's literally telling him exactly where he is. <laughs> Two Faces laugh is kind of heartbreaking in this movie, man. It is. Like, Every time he laughs, it's like, it's not like you would, th he's laughing like this is fucking, you know, I'm, I'm a hideous comic book villain, but instead like he laughs and I just get sad as if I walked past a children's burn ward or something mm. like that. Like this is grim. Yeah. There's nothing fucking remotely exuberant about it. No, like there that. shouldn't be. I mean, in D and D parlance, mm. which I can speak because I'm a nerd. Yeah. Drop it. Son. Drop it. Uh, Two Face is, is lawful neutral. Two, two face like in in Explain, the in, in the uh in, in the in the alignment perspective like there's there's lawful good there's lawful neutral there's lawful evil there's chaotic good chaotic neutral and chaotic evil okay joker is chaotic evil hold on dude look oh here it comes the ass this is where we jump the shark boom first appearance of the bat ass yeah god piece ass. and for everybody who's always like man why don't they do the fucking gray suit or the blue suit well they did motherfucker sold there's ass. your fucking gray suit there's your fucking blue suit <laughs> i do like that the the bat wing is hanging like a bat that's cool that's, that's the first bad. time they did that we never saw the bat wing parked before. no it just kind of shows up and then hey what look the who's fuck? here it's fucking robin it's the and thanksgiving bird and look at him. He's just like, uh, who's your tailor? He's like the old man. Who do you think? Uh, at this moment here, he's like, R, what does that stand for? 
is so not a fucking Batman line. No. Batman is the world's greatest detective. Why would he ever need to ask that question? And particularly in that creepy tone and stuff. Stands for Randy. <laughs> R. Does that mean you're a top or a bottom? I'm uh, a Roger Dodger. Yeah, it means I'm rough and ready. Like, good, good. You get in the boat and I'm going to get in the plane. Look at this shit, man. Like, why? Why is he your partner? Friendship. He, he would never let him be his partner. He's like, I fought Robin. <laughs> and he can't get my fucking back. This is cool, though. Yep. We never got to see the bat wing leave Wayne Manor before. And at the same time, the fucking bat boat is leaving as well. This carries on a long tradition of mostly useless bat vehicles. Yeah, because it works for about two minutes. Yeah, this like, is just to sell a toy. Yeah, this is totally cool. What? Shot down. Bang. Oh, <laughs> no, spoilers. All right. Guess what's going to happen to these two fucking vehicles? Um, the uh, it, I, I do like that shot, even though we're on a stage, clearly. the bat, Something about the bat signal mm -hmm. just fucking does it for me. Commissioner Gordon, don't have to do his job anymore. Yeah, he's just like, let's just say this one was a suicide, too. <laughs> But suddenly he's like, wait a second, wait a second. They're here to do our jobs for us. Huzzah. They, they almost dance a jig. It's almost like, <laughs> doodly, doodly, doo, doo. we don't have to work today. And watch it. Look at He couldn't fuck. He can't even turn no his head. Way. He couldn't fucking see him. Like, Go uh, get him. Why does he hit him? Why does he shake his hand? What did he do? <laughs> you don't have like, to work again. You called him on your cell phone, <laughs> didn't you? Because the signal didn't work. Thanks, O'Malley. Would you let this guy... You barely knew. Take the boat. Why are they taking a plane and a boat? No, no. Why not just both go in the same vehicle? Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Again, sell the toys. That's true. By the time you're here, man, they're playing Battleship. They're selling all sorts of toys at this point. This is stage in the game. Yeah. Also, there are Joker mines. I'm sorry. Riddler mines. Mm. Riddler mines in the water. Going back to your thing. How the fuck does he do Riddler mines in the water? He, he's preparing so far ahead before they got because there. Because they knocked over a casino and a, and a jewelry store. Go back to your... But yes, lawful, lawful, neutral, yeah. lawful neutral. Okay. Um, or lawful evil. Either one. But it's all about like duality. It's the choice. It's the, the heads or tails. Mm. It's not, I'm crazy. Like there, there's an order to the way Two Face acts. There's, there's a psychology behind it. Not just I'm nuts and want to blow shit up. <laughs> like, come on, dude. you're lawful neutral. That boat looks like it was made of wood. Balsa, balsa wood. Yeah, <laughs> like that. The bat boat looked like really cheap. Looked very easy to blow up. These vehicles brought to you by Balsa Corporation. All right, now, okay, the boat's done, but don't worry, man. I got the fucking bat wing. It's okay. And I've, re I've made some additions to it. Last time I had the bat wing, somebody took it down with a gunshot. Yep. It's I've all good. learned since then. Look at this shit, dude. It's like a James Bond movie. Some fucking frog man attacking it's you. It's all Thunderball, baby. Um, but this time he's ready for sure. I've learned what happened to me last time. Meanwhile, he's like looking at this thing. You could tell on his radar that Robin's getting attacked. One ping only. What can you do with a fucking one ping only? <laughs> <laughs> what can you possibly do from the sky? And then, once again, at least it wasn't a bullet. No. It's, it's some sort of mind laser. laser ray. But all that money spent on a bat wing and a bat boat, and they both go right into the water. Although the bat wing, I didn't remember this, becomes the bat sub. Which, why didn't they fucking do that to begin with? <laughs> yeah, just won't get in the just plane. Fuck it, let's go in the sub. He's like, we'll just... and that way, if we get shot out of the sky, <laughs> we'll be in a sub. Or just start in the sub. Like, go underwater, he couldn't see you coming. Sneak up on him. They're like, look at those mines above us. Good thing we took this sub. <laughs> huh. And now Batman's underwater with a cape, dude. Yeah, it's You okay. know how much drag there would be? Look, you're seeing it right there. But I do like this. That's not bad. Batman captures them. He doesn't kill them. Although, you know, for look, he's going to hook them up to the fucking buoy and shit so maybe they drown when their oxygen runs out They're like, we can't breathe <laughs> Help Sorry, us. we're getting tired this is the cruelest death of all time <laughs> just keep swimming um and here we show up at uh at uh new york's uh hottest new nightclub <laughs> the cranium <laughs> <laughs> new york's hottest nightclub is bat slave <laughs> located inside a canine abortion clinic <laughs> in alphabet city club owner Piss O'Donnell <laughs> invites you to slide down the bat pole. This club has everything. Nipples, bat butts, kryptonite condoms, and a celebrity impersonator with a gigantic penis, Tommy Lee Holmes. <laughs> that was my Stefan. There's Spaza. This comes <laughs> that was yours. That was nice. <laughs> this comes uh this brings uh, perhaps one of the only moments of levity that I can kind of get behind when he's like Holy rusted metal, Batman. 
And he's like, huh? And he goes, this metal, it's holy. And he's rusted. And he goes, oh. But his huh <laughs> is the least Batman thing yeah. ever been done on a movie. Batman has never been like, huh? What? Because that indicates you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Batman always knows what's fucking going Batman on. Batman never asks a question he doesn't know the answer to. <laughs> It bums me out too. Where he's just like earlier, he's like, "We're not just a partner, but a friend." They were never either. No, they weren't friends. They were barely fucking partners. And yeah, shit. I met you like three days ago before that dude put an entire thing to market and got <laughs> laser beams and laid mines. Yeah, and- remember, like right before the box <laughs> swept the world <laughs> over the course of three days. Um, Robin gets to take on uh, Two Face, who killed his parents, as we mm. all know, as we watched. And, of course, this movie, you know, is about revenge, uh, you know, leading down a bad path. So, naturally, even though he's headbutting the fuck out of this two-faced fool, uh, he's going to decide to kind of do the right thing. Because that's what a hero should fucking theoretically do, I guess. (laughs) I guess. And what is the, huh? Yeah, I don't know what's going on in this sequence here. Oh, he's climbing up. He's doing, you know. Because he's got to fall on something. So but it's a climb. death trap, dude. It's another goddamn death trap, which puts us closer to the Batman TV show. This movie just keeps going bit by bit closer and closer to the goddamn Batman TV show. So much so, as we said before, that by the time they go to Batman and Robin, <laughs> it's full on. But look, that is a death trap. Right Absolutely. There. Will the caped crusader beat it to the top of the island before the spinning spikes? <laughs> Tune in tomorrow. Same by time. Same by time. Oh. Robin, of course, uh, will elect uh, to make the right choice as a as a hero should. But again, 45-year-old Chris O'Donnell <laughs> reaching down to fucking save 60-year-old Tommy Lee Jones. If this had been a 9-year-old, fuck it, 10-year-old boy, fuck it, 13-year-old boy. Give him puberty. If he's 10, there's something really like fucking weird and but, surreal but beautiful about it and yeah, all that either. youthful exuberance. 13-year-olds are pricks. Dude. <laughs> you know, they're all sauce and like, fuck you, dad, and <laughs> shit like that. So you don't necessarily want, oh, my God, he's got jet boots on yeah, his yeah. fucking. Don't even. Oh, the bat, <laughs> the bat jet boots. Why would you ever need those? What were they for? It's it's the equivalent of like the beginning of a James Bond movie where Q would be like, "Here's your inflatable coat, James Bond." And by the end of the movie, you know he's gonna need a fucking inflatable coat. Yeah, this is just like a bag of tricks, man. It's like Harpo Marx he just keeps reaching in the cape, <laughs> pulling out fucking different shit. But what if you're fighting? And somebody punches your fucking little control, and all of a sudden they turn on your boots, and you go fucking Phew. no capes, speeding away. Um, the uh, this is a pretty uh, colorful outfit, wouldn't you say? A little bit. I bet you those two figures have names. You know, like the lions outside the New York Library. It's like patience and fortitude. I bet you those. <laughs> they named like, them. They like, actually named them. On Claude the and Monet, <laughs> or uh, Joel and Schumacher. <laughs> um, hey, look who's back, Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, Normally, such a welcome figure in any movie. I know. I don't want to. I don't want anyone thinking that I don't like Tommy Lee Jones. He's one of my favorite actors on the planet. He's amazing in Men in Black. I love this movie though. <sighs> this. That's right. So this predates Men in Black. Yeah. Well, good for him. He did get a comic book movie that actually worked out for him. Yeah. This one. One, one of the better ones ever. Not so much. Do you think he looks at what's his name uh, performance? Chris uh, Aaron Eckhart. And he's just like, <laughs> mine was better. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, why didn't you turn the character when you said luck? <laughs> Blind doodah luck. That's when you become <laughs> Jack Nicholson crazy. Speaking of Jack Nicholson crazy. What the hell is up with that hair? Oh, he's and this motherfucker's chewing the scenery at this point, man. Larger than life. But I give it up for the cane work, man. He's always oh, working that he's fucking sweet with cane. the cane. Yeah. And to be fair, there's not a shit ton that you can do in nineteen ninety five with the Riddler. No. Like if you were to do a Chris Nolan version of the Riddler now, you know, you're doing like a fucking mind crime terrorist or something like that. You're not doing this shit where he's stealing fucking brainwaves or something like that. Although let's also be clear. This is, I want to say like two years, three years after Sons of the Lambs where you could have a totally legitimate serial killer evil person. Like we've, we've had the the very well thought out, the incredibly grounded sort of serial killer thing happening mm. to have to go backwards and be like, I'm just going to be crazy. 
hey, with my hair and my glasses. And, yeah. Oh, I got a cane. Like, you could have done real evil in a real way. A scary bad guy. Like Heath yeah. Ledger did. Essentially, Heath Ledger did yeah. serial killer Joker. Yeah, like bringing it back and like, this guy's legitimately scary. And it was unnerving and you were like, mm-hmm. holy fuck. And it really plays nicely in this world of grotesques. But instead, you know, we're looking at... Uh, I don't know what this is at this point. Like Cirque du Soleil. This looks like the Wiz, dude. We're literally <laughs> in the Emerald City of the Wiz at this point. And the room is so green that you can't really see it. But that Batman suit is blue. Yeah. Like a blue Batman suit. It's just metallic blue. Well, it's like blue steel. How does the Riddler even know that Robin is Batman's one and only partner like he goes batman's one and only junior partner you got like a dozen of these guys but also like when when did that happen when did he <laughs> announce that did he put out a press release going like he is my partner well with the new photos that he sends to the papers <laughs> <I'm sure laughs> my little... <laughs> eight by tens <laughs> my new pal yeah, you're gonna need to run a story so here you go <laughs> um riddler calls batman the dark knight detective that mm. may be a first reference to the dark knight in any of these movies. I don't think they ever said it. I don't think so. In Tim Burton's, like in all the media, they mm. were like the Dark Knight. But I don't think anyone ever says the Dark Knight until this movie. If I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll hear about it on Twitter. Yes, but, you will. So there's a self-consciousness to this movie in terms of like, we are superheroes. Mm-hmm. Dark Knight detective. Somebody says Caped Crusader, I believe, at one point. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's Mrs. Kane. At some point, says, "What are you saying about the new Cape Crusader? What do you oh, think?" Oh my lord! It feels Gossip like a very fucking gurdy. gurdy thing to do. Um, well, I don't understand what the fuck just happened here. He whips a batarang, it right. breaks the skylight, which Batman is a big fan of ever breaking the skylights, <laughs> and then for some reason this fucks up everything. So, like, all you needed to do was shoot this thing. Yeah, like that's it. Like, yeah, you know, you could have just... accomplished that with your fucking bat yeah, wing. Not even throw a rock at it. Oh, this is where they ran out of money. Oh, yeah. That's the days before (laughs) really good CG, man. They're just like, just use these little, here, we'll just kind of make Mm. them go like this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a Final Cut plug-in we can just. (laughs) (laughs) Why does he have to press the button twice? Oh, and it gives a fuck. That was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it up for the ass shot. You know it ain't Nicole Kidman. It's some stunt nope. lady. Could even be a stunt god. Well, it's a that guy was, named Phil. It's a pretty hot shot, though. Um, this is, of course, uh, Batman is uh, going to try to save both of them. The the physics of this are impossible. No, don't even. Watch. She's plummeting, and somehow yeah. he plummets faster uh-huh. to catch up to the guy who's way ahead of everybody else. Yep, so good. Uh, but thank God this motherfucker was in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> That's Finally, save all their lives right here, yes. man. Um, this again, I'm, I know I sound like a broken record, but this could have been amazing if this was a little boy. And yeah. he's this little boy is fucking sailing down this fucking shaft. That sounds dirty. <laughs> sailing down this empty missile silo toward fucking certain death, and he's fucking got to save the boy, and the boy. Fucking, you know, puts his hands out and fucking he catches them. That's beautiful, man. This, it's just like, if I'm Batman, I'm like, this whiny prick? (laughs) (laughs) My quote unquote partner Mm. who ruined the bat boat? Fuck him. Like, I got a girlfriend now. It's all good. And then, oh my God, just when you thought the fucking. And so, like, they just fell 18,000 stories. And so did Two Face. Yeah. Just hanging out. Hey, I, I came down to shoot you. Yeah, exactly. And once again, this is a Batman who's just like, you know, I, I'm going to pull something out of my cage. He's ever pulling something from me on his back. As many masks as Tom Cruise pulled off his face in Mission Impossible <laughs> 2, that's always the shot of Batman reaching behind himself. And he just happens to carry a fistful of silver dollars. Yes, that are marked the exact same way that Duvets would mark his silver dollars. In your fucking, your bat, in your utility belt. You know, you're like, Alfred, pack $10 worth of $7, <laughs> just in case. You ever go, go to Nathan's, get me a bunch of quarters. This guy don't know how to feel. He's just like, I should have done that. <laughs> Why is it okay that you killed him and yeah. I didn't kill him? Why are we killing people? Well, it's a good thing he landed perfectly in his hand. La- and which side was that, scarred or good side? I think it was good side up. So what, he died? A good guy. This is his Darth Vader moment? <laughs> Leave me. It should have been Go, the, Luke. The thumbs up, the hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it, <laughs> why they were stealing that moment, man. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. His head got all fucking warped up, and it, well, his hair certainly flattened it's out. It's very, uh... He's got a lot of hat head. 
But what happened? I guess it was like all the brain waves, you know, fucking. Basically, it's the same thing that happens in Green Lantern to uh to the Skarsgård kid. Oh, that's right, <laughs> fucking the Victor villain Hammond. in that movie. Yes, holy shit! My brain is so huge. Once again, he's confirming for everybody. Like now, you got this dude fucked up on the ground. He looks a little brain damaged. Don't sit there and be like, "I'm Bruce Wayne." <laughs> Be like, I was never Bruce Wayne. <laughs> You're a crazy person. And son. what you do is while he's sitting there incapacitated, you take his cock out, you take some fucking shots of it, and be like, if you get out of line again, <laughs> I'm showing everyone your little dick, man. He's like, oh, I'll be mm. good. So no what's with the bat thing? That's something out of Dark Knight Returns. Just though, I got to keep saying. Oh, Ooh. shit, son. Oh, 1995, you're sitting in a movie theater, and for the first time in a cinematic Batman movie, a live-action Batman movie, they introduce Arkham Asylum. And this is legit creepy. Like, I'll give him that. They call him Dr. Burton. He's got Tim's hair. Yes, he does. Um, but Rene it's. Rene Yeah, the great TV, mm. Rene Aubergine. Say it again. Aubergine. I remember him from Best of the West. Do you? I think he was in that, if I remember correctly. He's also in Benson. That's right. Maybe that's why I remember yeah. him more so than anything else, Benson. Um, you're right. I don't think he was in Best of the West. Um, this was such a cool thing, though, because we're like, oh my God, Arkham? Arkham, are we going to see anybody else? They didn't do any pass or mm. pass by. In the next movie, Batman and Robin, you do see some, yeah, like the Riddler's Bane's outfit, the Joker's yeah. outfit and shit like that. But in this moment, you were just so delighted after all that fucking weird ass, <laughs> the, the whiz-like ending that we had to endure, at least you were ending in Arkham Asylum. And, you know, they they cover their tracks in terms of like right. R- R- Riddler doesn't seem to know who Batman is. And he, I'm Batman. Yeah. And this actually kind of looks cool. You're right, man. He would have worked as Batman. Flap. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. That is still, give it up, though, dude. That is the fucking first Arkham Asylum in a Batman movie. Mm-hmm. As, an, as a fan in 1995, you were like, eh, well, at least we got that. Yeah. Like, you leave the movie and you don't go like, we got fucked again. Right. You talk about all the things that like we're good not a bad button yeah and that's a real strong button to go out on mm. unfortunately the talk <laughs> about all the things that were good is a very short discussion but still i i i mean once again we're ending with like somebody with alfred in the car mm. there's this bunch of tropes that they follow now right. you know all successful beats he's like look i don't need this action figure anymore <laughs> yeah, i, don't I to. took it out of the card it's not mint on card so fucking you could sell it as a loose yeah. figure your voodoo butt plug is not gonna <laughs> <laughs> i don't need this <laughs> take it back she's like it's smelly but i'm still gonna make out with you and this creepy old guy's like i like to watch eve <laughs> i like to move it move it um this is uh, – they found a real nice way to end the movie, though. Thankfully, it's not on Chase Meridian. Um, it's uh, – look, they push in on Batman. They're like, all right, he's going to be okay. He's going to make <laughs> it after all. This is cool. Well, d- except, except for the like, shaky the ears. head. Look at the shaky head. Yep, you can't know. run in that cow. Look at boom, boom. It looks like my fat thighs when I run. <laughs> There's a lot of jiggle to that head. shouldn't look like that. But still, but, cool idea. Yeah, I mean, if they hadn't blown up the car, they could be driving. But now they're just going <laughs> to They're like, we lost the plane. <laughs> we lost the boat. We don't even have a fucking car. So now we just have to run around <laughs> town. And mercifully, ah. it all fucking comes to an end, man. The credits roll. And we hear you two kick in. Bow, now, now, Look at that bow, very bow. expensive cast, man, for Ooh. heaven's sakes. And and uh, that's it. Suddenly, Batman Forever is over. Now, Favs. There he is. Where, where, where? Assistant. Assistant John Favreau. John Favreau. Look at him, man. He's like, I'm going to put that in fucking iron, man. Love yeah. her. Wow, look at that gang leader, Don the Dragon Wilson. Don the Dragon Wilson. They talk about him and fucking say anything. He's like, kickboxing, sport of the future. You know kickboxing, Don, Don the, the Dragon, Dragon Wilson? <laughs> I can tell by your face. No. He's a real deal. Holy shit, man. That's, that's one of those moments in life where I'm like, that was real? That's a guy? Um, What are your thoughts overall? I mean, it feels like, you know, it's not good. <laughs> that, that we know that right. we got but there's a there's an element of schumacher auditioning a little bit like he's doing the best version of schumacher here he got a turnkey franchise dude like yeah. think about it like tim burton had to build something had to convince people to come out and see it and had to show you what a batman live action movie looked like in the late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. this guy's walking into a turnkey franchise especially because he knows what to do and what not to do. Right. And what you're not going to do is anything fucking dark as Batman Returns where kids are crying because the penguin toy is pissing in the face <laughs> of the Catwoman toy. You could take her top off. It was disgusting. It was dark. There were there was the 
Batman abattoir playset <laughs> with all these dead bodies. Can we have shit. a raw fish happy meal? Can, can you do that for us? <laughs> so naturally, there were guidelines of like, we got to stay away from all this shit. Yeah. I mean, like he added the Schumacher. Like he brought the fucking neon guns. He brought the shoe. He brought the shoe. He put on both shoes in the next yes. movie. And this shoe, he's the man with one shoe. Yes. It's one shoe is Burton. One the other shoe, shoe is Schumacher. One man. neon shoe. He's like Two-Face. <laughs> half of him is, is normal. The other half is a garish and over the top. Yeah, the next movie goes full garish. He just burns both sides. Two face becomes it. one face, and Batman and Robin becomes legendary. But you know, we we kick the Schumacher movies a bit, man. But I was on the set of Batman and Robin. He's a lovely human being. Yeah, and he's entertaining. Tells great stories. The whole reason we know Cradle the Balls worked the shaft, the Sly Stallone <laughs> story. He was the guy that took it out there into yeah. the world. He's the one that started. Aww. telling it. and so he's you give it up for that. Man. Thanks, Shu. Um, and also, there was a Batman movie. You know, yes. at least they, they didn't just let it die or somebody else didn't do it and it was could have been worse or whatever. Yeah. I mean, for whatever you have to say about this movie, it's about Batman. Yeah. And you, yeah, and good you, point. You can't say that about either of the Burton movies. Excellent fucking point. You know, Excellent. God, that's why I like having Mark on the show. You had the, the first one was all about the Joker. Yes. Second one was all about the Penguin and or Catwoman. Right. But this is the first Batman movie that is about Batman. And right. what did we learn? Batman's boring. <laughs> <laughs> really boring. Put your fucking suit on and go be Batman. All that Chase Meridian stuff, for the love of God, yeah, dude. Like, I don't want to see Batman romancing people. I don't want to see him having psychological issues. I just want to see him punching people in the face. Do you remember who, at this point in the movie's ending, you're like, right on, and it had a big opening weekend and did more money than Batman Returns. Do you remember who you were thinking, like, all right, who the next villain's going to be? Oh, God. As we know, it wound up being Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, and, and Freeze. Bane. Yeah. I think Mr. Freeze was always kind of in the running because of the Paul Dini, Bruce Tim. Yeah. Like, I think that's the one everybody wanted. Yeah. Like, but they just wanted Mr. Bruce Freeze. Yeah. Give me heart advice. And there was always this talk of, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, they wanted some gigantic fucking movie star. Right. Who didn't wind up being, like, the good But choice. it was like, we're casting Al McPherson or somebody as his wife. And she's going to be frozen, and it's totally going to be Heart of Ice. And you're like, excellent. Yeah. And then you see it, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Fucked again. <laughs> That's what this whole era of Batman movies should be called. Give Batman, that the Iron Batman colon fucked again. <laughs> um, it's, uh, but it's a part of our Batman history, kids. It is. And uh, again, rather a Batman movie, the no Batman movie. Mm. And there are cool flourishes not now now in the year fucking you know 2014 you look at it and you're like oh come on you call that cool but i'm taking you back to a different world man where yeah. where we were so hungry for comic book anything that when they threw us a little bone like i hear you he could be halfway to metropolis <laughs> by now and they were all those of us in the audience who were comic book fans were like ah but we were so hungry they tossed us little bones and we'd suck the meat off it and the marrow out the bones but now it's an embarrassment of riches, dude. It is. Now all they do are make comic book movies that are very close to the source material, made by fans, for fans. Here's one thing to to think about. Mm. The Matrix is yeah. only four years away. From this movie. From that movie. Yeah. Like, and the gulf of progress you make between those two films, like... It's true, dude. Maybe when this movie is happening... The Wachowskis are first starting to get their ideas about, like, what if we could do this? Or yeah. Imagine this. Or they're starting to maybe build the Matrix at this point. Yeah. It's like, how do we make the best superhero movie ever? Could you imagine? You're Warner Brothers, and you're like, all right, we have Batman Forever, and it's a huge fucking hit, and blah, blah, blah. And then the Wachowskis step, step in, they're like, this is the fucking future. And they show you the Matrix. <laughs> at that point, you're just like, kill everybody in Batman Forever. Yeah. This is an embarrassment. And I'm for pretty all sure, like, because the, as I understand the chronology, they wanted to do the Matrix at Warner Brothers. They didn't want to give them $100 million or $85 million of them costing because they hadn't done hardly anything. Right, 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 right. So they had to go off and make Bound and prove that they could direct a movie before they could do Before the they got the Matrix. Like, that was their testing ground. That was their, their proving. A grammar signature. Yeah. yeah. It's like, go off and do that. I think. Um, I think Warner Brothers gave them, like, $8 million. Go out and make this movie. And if you can do it, then we'll do the Matrix. I think... Bound was a Gramercy picture, which was part of Universal. Because mm. I think it was in the same family as Mars. Now, I could be completely fucking wrong, but I, th I want to say it was around the same time. Because I think the the people at Gramercy was like, oh, do you guys want to see Bounds about tough lesbians? <laughs> and we were like, why? Why do you think we would want to see that? Just because we're young men in our mid-20s and shit? Perhaps I mean, we, we do. enjoy pussy? <laughs> yes, we do want to see it. But don't assume we want to see it. 
Um, I think it was around that time. So I, maybe they did have to go off and prove their metal and stuff. Yeah. They're two different studios. Could you imagine? What a quantum leap from Bound to The Matrix. Yeah. But what a quantum leap even from Batman Forever to The yeah. Matrix. I and mean, The Matrix was cheaper than Batman Forever. Yeah. And and when does Blade show up? Like Blade is 96? Well, Blade, what happens here is Batman Forever happens, then Batman Robin happens, and then right. the comic book movie is dead for what feels like two or three years, and then Blade happens. And Blade's like and Blade is the one that brings it all back. Mm-hmm. Like Blade is the – the um, I want to say – is Blade in the 90s or in the, two, in the aughts? I want to say it's like late 90s. I think it might be 98 or 99. So that came out. Well, Dogma's 99. Because I just Spider-Man don't have a is, memory of making Spider Man is 01. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Late yeah. 01. Summer 01. Yeah. It's summer 01. You're right. So it's got to be like maybe 99 or something yeah, like because that. Because they had, I remember the trailer for Spider Man that had the Twin Towers in it. Yes. I still, still have it on my desk, on my laptop. I kept that trailer yeah. where he catches the helicopter. Yeah. It, it was, Spider Man wasn't even in the tree. I mean, the maybe teaser. it's 2002. Maybe I was right, it's 2002 because they had to pull it from the teaser. Yeah, because of September 11th, which 11. came at the end of 2001. You're right. right. So it was 2002. 2002. That's true. It was in the fucking, it was, uh, Spider Man's not even in the trailer except for like go for the ultimate spin. Yeah. But it's all about like a bank robber and guys yeah. getting a helicopter and they take off and they're flying through the city and then all of a sudden like we're not moving right. and they're stuck on this giant web between the twin towers it was so fucking badass yeah. looking they and they pull. pulled out pull out pull yeah. out and you're like this is amazing and, and then they cut to spider-man face. yeah close <laughs> and it was like i want to take you on a roll <laughs> oh that was good um but they had to pull the shots out after september yeah. 11th obviously but like so we're we're now like six years seven years away from the renaissance of the comic book movie I guess we're two years away from Batman and Robin. Robin. If this is 95, Bob, Batman and Robin got to be like 97 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. And then Blade is like 98 or 99. That would make sense. So really, only the comic book movie was only shut down for about a year or yeah, two Just years. like Warner Brothers was shut down. Like yeah, Warner they Brothers were nothing to out do. of the comic book business altogether. Like, fuck shit. you, DC. We're licking our heels. Yeah, they're like, nobody likes Batman. You see the returns <laughs> on Batman and Robin? Never thinking once like, hey, man, maybe... In the hands of somebody else. That's why you got to give it up for, I believe it was Jeff Robinov, mm. the Warner Brothers exec, who was just like, you know what? I think we can reboot Batman. And at first they were going to do it with, uh, what's his fuck? Um, Black Swan, Noah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aronofsky. Mm-hmm. A very year one version of the movie. And they felt it was too dark and stuff. But then Chris Nolan, they worked with him on Insomnia or whatever. And they were yeah. like, what we want you to try it. And he went in with this take. And they decided to jumpstart the franchise again. And... Now it's commonplace shit. Now they fucking restarted Spider-Man two minutes after fucking <laughs> Spider-Man 3 was over. But back then it was kind of bold to be like, yeah, we're going to make another Batman movie, even though nobody really seems to care about Batman anymore because mm-hmm. of the last one. But we think this will be a cool one. Yeah. And they, they did. And it didn't have all the pomp and circumstance of the 1989 Batman. Mm-mm. Like it wasn't like, holy shit, he's here. You know, because he it hadn't been too long since he was gone. It seemed like that movie was like them going, look, we're setting up our world and we're just here to assure you that we're not Batman and Robin. <laughs> That's the succinct job of Batman Begins, to just right. take the terrible taste of Batman and Robin out of everybody's mouths and shit like that. But then that sets up a world and then by two, you're into some of the most brilliant comic book movie making of all time. The Godfather uh, 2 of comic book movies, yeah. if you will. Yeah, so, uh, oh, you're right, dude. It's crazy to think that, like, we're only a few short years away from everything changing. And The Matrix changes everything, not just the way yeah. Warner Brothers does business, but, like, this is a movie, pre-Matrix movie. Like, you know, this, you can was, tell. this was their idea of big-time Hollywood and shit like that. Yeah, like, once you get the Wachowskis and the sort of wire foo influence and all the John Woo stuff, like all the guns and the this and the fast and the music and the effects and all that shit. Think about the fight scenes in this movie. Oh, then God. think about fight scenes in a Batman movie post-Matrix. Yeah. You know, it's just like there's different shit going yeah, on. Although like, Chris Nolan kept the fighting very close, particularly in Begins. Yeah, he can't did. really see anything. Though. But I mean, like they went, they got some dude to teach, you know, Bale how to fight. Movie fight, but right. still but fight. Like, You've got to train for the two months it's going to take you to learn how to do this. Not just a stuntman whipping a cape around. Yeah. So. Batman Forever, kids. It seemed like a long time ago, and it was nearly 20 fucking years ago. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed our little walk down memory lane and chit chat about the Batman. This is a foreign version of the Batman, kids. A lot of youngsters looking at this going, this ain't Batman, man. <laughs> at one point, this was Batman. Back in 1995, bitch, when we all had Batman fever. <laughs> Copyright Kevin Mark.
<laughs> um, the director was Joel Schumacher, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the cast, of course, Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, Jim Carrey, Nicole Kidman, Chris O'Donnell. We watched it on uh, an iTunes rented version. You can rent it from iTunes or even own it from iTunes. Mm. It's, of course, on DVD and Blu-ray. Batman Forever is an easy-to-find fucking movie. Could I'm even sure. be a Netflix picture for all I know. I'm sure there's a VHS somewhere you can get a hold of at a garage sale near you. 50 cents, you can own this masterpiece, <laughs> man. All the time and effort that went into it. Um, but there it is, man. Not the greatest Batman cinematic adventure, but... As Not the worst either. <laughs> Shockingly enough, man. If you sit there, if you've never seen this before and you've just watched it with this commentary track and you're just like, oh, my God, how much worse can the next one be? Oh, you wait. Oh, <laughs> believe me. It just it falls into hell. But uh, be rest assured, man, uh, when Mark is back here next and he will be back in the fat cave again. We're going to be talking about, we're going to end this Batman era of movies yes. and talk about, uh, watch and talk about Batman and Robin. Ampersand. Yeah. Robin. This movie was PG-13. What do you think the 13 was for? I don't know. That butt shot when the chase for <laughs> idiot was, or all, the butt shot of the Batman. Yeah, all the lingerie. <laughs> is, it's not really PG-13, is it? I no, mean, there's, there's hardly any violence. Maybe the, two faces. Maybe the notion of a man hitting the face with acid. Yeah, there's no language. There's barely any non-cartoon violence. Yeah. The there's, fighting is pretty tame. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. And you know they were, like, fighting for that PG-13. Come right? on, we need some edge. Yeah. Put a hell in there. It's in a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> the score is very big, man. Like, Ellie Goldenthal is, is fighting to keep some sort of theme running through this whole thing yeah like he's doing all the heavy lifting that the, the movie shouldn't be doing yeah in a big bad way but it's still like it with all due respect it's just not it's not you know the 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 danny elfman no i mean it's all bombast like there's no there's no real sense of like we're sweeping you along there's no emotional content it's just all horns and corn gold and big and you're like yeah i am man it is, this is very horny <laughs> You're right. Ability. That's my big beef about this. It's fucking very horny. Um, Ellie Goldenthal married to Julie Taymor. Really? At least when they were doing uh, this picture. I think they still are or something like that, if I remember mm. this correctly. Is he did turn off the dark, I tell you what. He did not do turn off the dark. <laughs> he dodged that bullet and shit. But yeah, his good lady wife, man, uh, fucking years after this, what, 10 years, maybe 12 years after this, she, uh, she would, as much as Joel Schumacher fucking killed Batman... <laughs> She would go on to fucking kill people playing Spider Man. I wonder if Elliot Goldenthal is the link between Julie Taymor and U two because U two is on the soundtrack. Maybe Goldenthal had a sit down. Oh my god, Mark, you're fucking absolutely right. Yeah, maybe he is the bridge between the two of them. He is. He's the finger cuffs between. Uh, <laughs> between <laughs> and he's like, think about this. He's like, you know what fucking made Batman Forever work? You too. Done. You put you two in Spider Man, you turn off the dark, we're all getting rich. <laughs> Hand over fist. <laughs> Batman forever, folks. You'll remember it forever. Uh or probably like a few minutes yeah. after this podcast is done. What do you got? Uh are you working on anything you want to send them toward? Um, no, like this is it's it's a transitional year for me, mm. I feel. Like I'd I'd spent some time away from comics to, to chase the TV the TV dragon. Mm. But this year it's it's like reinvesting myself in comics. And you know, I got a book coming out from Top Cow this summer called Genius. Nice. I got a couple of things in the hopper. I'm gonna take the image and Dark Horse and you know, I'm gonna live the dream again, man. He's a comic book fan, man. I dig that shit. Um, so much so that we watched this movie not once but twice in the span of a week. Yeah. And not having seen it since like ninety five. It was crazy <laughs> that I've watched it twice in a week, man. And never again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We get to, really, we probably put get to put Batman forever away forever. forever. With this we exercise this demon. <laughs> Um, well, there it is, folks. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us in the Fat Cave for uh, this trip into the cinematic Gotham. Uh, it kind of looks like Gotham. A yeah. dark shadow. This is like the Tales from the Dark Side version of Batman. Bizarro Total. World Batman. Color form Batman. Very much so. Excellent. Well put. <laughs> the color forms Batman. <laughs> Um, to give it up, everybody, for Mark Bernard. And always, always a pleasure. Always brings insight in a way that I can't because I'm just so fucking baked. <laughs> um, good that you were here, man. Great fucking stuff. Thank you for coming to the Fat Cave. You got always. it, man. 
That is Fat Man on Batman for this week, kids. Uh, tune in next week. Same fat time, same fat channel. Smodcast.com. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at Smodcast.com.